Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, to... <laughs> welcome back to Dinner in a Game, where Corey has to do finger guns. That's all we ever look bring... for. Is I'm bringing guns. it back. I'm bringing back finger guns. I'm doing it. Anyone, we can all bring back finger guns, ladies and gentlemen. I would appreciate your help. <laughs> so it is Friday, and number one, thank God. Number two, it, it means it's time for Crossing the Veil, which is our Firefly uh, live play, or actual play, I should say, um, of the Firefly TTRPG that was originally released, what? 2008, 17, 18, something like that. Um, and it was made using the Cortex system. Um, this is a universal system uh, that was cre created by, uh, was it created by Weiss and Hickman, Jonathan? Or did they just use it for this game system? Um, it, it's, it's the, it's their system. Um, they had the, they had the license. I don't know if, um, they directly did it or somebody sub licensed their system to make it happen, but I mean, their names are all over it. No, no, no. The, the, I know the book was produced by Weiss and Hickman. So the book was produced by them as well. I just meant, did they create the Cortex system, which you said they did. So that's cool. Um, yeah. But it is the Cortex system, and it is a universal RPG system that is much more heavily leaned into the actual aspects of story-driven RPGs. Um, it does have a pretty strong mechanic aspect to it, but the mechanic as aspect, aspect is even created by the backstory you make for your character. So as it goes, this is an incredibly story heavy system and I really like, I like it and enjoy it. It's a dice pool system, which makes it kind of complicated at times, but for the most part, it's still really enjoyable and it has a currency system in game, which I think everyone has come to really enjoy the plot point system, which can take you from a impossible seeming situation into a heroic success or a massive massive failure in a very short amount of time <laughs> don't talk about kel's character like that <laughs> hey he, was... just, he just likes to compound his injuries that's all i'm saying we don't talk about bullshit no 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 we don't all talk right. about bullshit it's not my fault apparently my character has no sense of uh uh god why can i not think of the word Self preservation. Thank you. <laughs> because it was two words, and you're trying to use one. Um, but. Uh... <laughs> oh, <me, Ray. laughs> wow. Y'all coming at me today. <laughs> what I do? You, your character has made me use like six applications of clot in painkiller. <laughs> I was gonna go with common sense. <laughs> Even chat's coming for you. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, come on, Liquid! Come on, man. We love you, Liquid. We love you. So, and you're not wrong. <laughs> so, you know, I don't take that comment back from earlier, Alyssa, about you you being the reason we had to you know do this mission now. <laughs> she did I did everything in my power to make sure that we didn't have. I very much you open the door. <laughs> so let's go ahead and say hi to the lovely people who are going to be tortured this session and hopefully um come out smelling like roses and being big damn heroes uh, hi everybody how y'all doing good yeah we're fine everything's fine where's your kitty cal oh uh, they ran off one of the other ones gotcha so <clears throat> tonight we're going to be playing yeah, we're we'll be playing Firefly, which means that we're all gonna be in the verse and all gonna try and be big damn heroes. But every one of these characters was developed by these players and has great plot lines and great stories. And so we're gonna be delving into those backstories a little more extensively. We've kind of taken uh, Alyssa's character, Mariana, and used her to beat the living shit out of the initial story and really kind of drive it. Um, therefore, I've Just been killing off all of her family members and torturing her with memories of them and everything like that. Um, so I don't see any reason to stop doing that. Um... <laughs> Lisa, Ray, in your, Lisa, in your defense, Lissa kind of did that to themselves. Lissa, how are you doing? Look, I started it, but Ray has beaten the literal dead horse. I, I did. I did. Yeah, no. Yeah. I killed uh, the horsey. Our... 
Or I should say, exploded the literal dead horse. It didn't explode. It just got a fire bomb. It, it still and got fire bomb. It got fire bombed after it was dead. So you had cooked horse yeah. though. <laughs> Again, beating the dead horse. Oh cooked look, it. dinner. Because this is dinner in a game, and we don't waste. Also, R.I.P. Sparkles. <laughs> R.I.P. Sparkles. R.I.P. Sparkles. Sparkle. We need a TV. Sparkles emote now. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, I'll yeah. figure out something. Yeah, just, just have R.I.P. with like a sparkly horse or something. <laughs> no, have a sparkles. gravestone that has a horse uh, imprint on it. Yes. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to steal that gift of the shooting star from uh, uh, from uh, Knowing's Half the Battle thing. From the, oh, yeah. this, 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 like, and it says sparkles as it goes by. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yes. Also, <laughs> sparkle stakes. I love num I love uh, numbers, but they help. We don't talk about sparkles. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't talk about sparkles. Oh, liquid sparkle <laughs> steaks. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alyssa, who are you yes. playing? <laughs> I am playing Mariana Redfield. I am the captain of this boisterous bunch. Um, and uh, we don't know what the fuck we're getting ourselves into. It'll be I fine. I explicitly tried to get away from this shit. It'll be fine. But here we are. No, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah it's fine. fine. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. It'll be fine. God, that is me. <laughs> Shit. Wow, Ray, getting Ray, called Ray, out here. Ray is attacking us all with that one. Hey, Corey. Look, Ray, I have been looking for my character sheet in my phone for the past five minutes. I didn't need to come back to that. That's not what I need to come back in on. Jonathan, mm -hmm. how are you doing? I'm good. Good, 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 good. Um, I hope everything's going well for you. Everything getting settled down now. I hope, I hope, I hope, hope. Um, yeah. It's the same. Well, I'm sorry then. <laughs> but hopefully things will get calmed down soon enough. But tonight you get to escape a little of that. Who are you playing? Uh, I am playing Atlas, who is the pilot of the ship. And he's a and he's a really calm really relaxed type of guy. He actually is for all the craziness happening around him. Yeah, he is surprisingly well adjusted. He's surprisingly well adjusted. <laughs> I mean, like, there's some really bad stuff that's happened all around him, and I think he's handled it like a trooper. Like, the ship crashes, and he basically wakes up with, like, blood on his forehead, and uh, he just gets his go bag and starts making his way off the ship. And then he sees that somebody's got the the general and they've got him by gunpoint. And he just kind of like hangs off the side of the ship and just like takes one pot shot and kills the guy. And then he just like hops down and goes over to the general to take care of him. And then all of a sudden, like all these troopers start running in. And uh, like the general is with somebody else at the moment. And I just like shoot down a whole troop of troopers with, with a revolver. It was just craziness. Yeah. And I get blamed for the horse dying. I mean, I killed all the troopers that were shooting at the horse, but it's my fault that I didn't kill them all fast enough. Well, they, you killed all the troopers that were shooting yeah, at Lisa, you. Yeah, Lissa. And you then do. they kind of missed you and hit the horse is what actually happened. So. <laughs> well, look, look, look. I killed 12 troopers. You did. With a how many troopers? <laughs> how, many troopers <laughs> how many troopers did you take care of, Lissa? How many? I had the transportation. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I, you right until it got shot. <laughs> but see, this is this is not where I'm going with it. You didn't kill any, but still somehow the horse dies my fault. But here's my big question. It was your complication, how, not mine. <laughs> how many troopers did Sparkles kill? Sparkles It depends. Did anyone eat the body after it was cooked? Because they could have gotten food poisoning. Uh, that'd probably be like radiation poisoning too, with all that crap that was burning around. <laughs> yeah, let's let's be honest here. Yep, I don't think things are going Sparkles well. Sparkles but... killed anyone. It's probably brown coats, not alliance. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about eating horse. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jonathan, who is fairly fair. Mm -hmm. There's like a French-like planet in the alliance. There's definitely a French planet somewhere in the alliance. 
There's every planet in the Alliance. <laughs> so thank you, Jonathan, very much. Sorry, that became a side rant. <laughs> but I just want to say it's Sparkle's own fault. <laughs> it's Sparkle's own fault. <laughs> they shouldn't have trusted Mariana. <laughs> look, look, look. Look, all I'm saying is Sparkle should have known better than let Mariana love her if he wanted to survive the first episode. <laughs> You never bond with a PC. Every NPC knows this. <laughs> and you're especially never an NPC's pet, or PC's pet, ever. That is the surest way to death and a horrible death that you'll ever find. Never be, yeah. never be a special person to an NPC. Hey, Mariana, don't you have a fiance? <laughs> Not anymore. It's <laughs> lit. Yeah. I'll say it's like being the anime mom. And Kel, don't you have a family back in Core Worlds? Doesn't 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 Steve have a family? Like a brother and a mom and a dad. That's like brother, sister, father, Wait, mother, guys, and grandpa are dead. We've been off the cortex for what, like two and a half weeks now? That might have been like past tense verbs he should have been using. <laughs> well, yeah, because Grant, as far as as far as my characters family's concerned i'm dead if that's the case too possibly who are you playing tonight kel i'm playing mitchell uh he is a uh just you know rich kid from the core worlds went to be an alliance soldier turned brown coat spy um uh, at least for the time being he's known as mitchell that will change uh you know as you know once he gets a new credential since he's dead as far as anyone's concerned uh, and yeah, I'm the one that does the dumbass shit, apparently. Like, you know, trying to pull someone into a ship before and, you know, telling them to book it before I pull them in. <laughs> and I still saved you, Corey. Ass. Yeah, I still saved you there, though, uh, Corey. It definitely cost you. <laughs> oh, true. Me too. It would have cost us more, though, if he fell. <laughs> Corey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> tired, but good. Well, I'm sorry, you're tired. And how have everything's going well though otherwise? Yeah. No, uh, well well, my little fundraiser, but that's not super important. <laughs> you're that's not, that's that's far. I'm I'll do a shameless plug. I'm trying to raise money to purchase a new phone because mine's not doing what it needs to do. I do TikTok. Hard to do TikTok with a phone that's not functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, also trying to start streaming on my own. Need something better than what I have for that. You can find me on TikTok. Link in bio. Donate if you feel so inclined. I'd appreciate it. Do not feel obligated. There we go. Shameless plug. And his link is actually in chat right now. And you can go find that and use that to track him down. And see what he's talking about there. And if you can donate, do so. Um, every little bit helps. Everyone knows how expensive it is to try and get into this. And we always appreciate and try and support everyone who's trying to help out, bring entertainment to our geek and gaming community. And of course, you can find dinner and a games information in our link tree for all our socials. Remember, every single show, we do lots of stuff to try and entice you to stick around. One of the things we're doing right now is, during the show, there'll be a 20 minute period well, we'll be giving away raffle tickets. And at the end of the month, those raffle tickets go towards a drawing. And this month, that drawing is for this bad boy right here. That's Astarath, the Archdevil of Wrath. Um, he is from a studio called Archvillain Games. They make 3D printable files. You can't buy the physical copy of the mini. You have to have a 3D printer. You have to be able to print it out or you have to know someone who does. This boy is on a six inch wide base. He, he literally, I'm going to have to print out a dozen separate pieces. He is a lot. Um, but it's a 4K quality print. It is a 4K quality mini, which means all the detail you see in this picture will be coming out on the print. Now, we're gonna give this away on the, at the end of the month. Oh, the last night to get tickets is coming up quick, actually. It is gonna be on the 28th, which is Wednesday, which is going to be our Kingdoms of Mist show. And then on Friday, we're going to have our last show of the month, which is uh, Ivy Shadow's Pure Havoc D&D 5e stream. And we're gonna be giving away Astarath during that stream. 
okay so if you want chances to win all you have to do is watch our shows be there for the 20 minute period and we will be giving you one raffle ticket if you're a follower two raffle tickets if you're a subscriber and we'll be giving those away by giving you a keyword to type into chat during that 20 minute period so we are going to go ahead and do that tonight as well don't forget also that if you do follow us here not only does that let you enter into the raffle to get astrath but it also automatically makes you eligible to win this this is the DD core set that we're giving away this is the player's handbook the monstrous manual the dmg plus the gm screen it comes in the slip case so you can put it in your bookshelves real easy now this core set is the limited edition core set so it is the foil stamped embossed core set it is sparkly it is shiny and it looks different than the other standard core sets so if you make this your main set of rule books you will not have to write your name in sharpie on the edge of the book to keep track of it at the game store you will be able to keep track of it because it looks totally different um you keep missing the raffle by seconds uh well you know what you can blame lissa because she could like dm you when the raffle starts but she doesn't because she said she didn't like you anymore <laughs> i said no such thing she first was, off well see, i thought em was doing that because i was in streamers payback what was that oh did she do a hydrate oh, hydrate. oh i missed the hydrate yeah, that's why, because Lissa hydrated M over in their stream. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Hence the Uno reverse. Uno reverse. Got it, got it, got it. Note to, note to anyone out there, if you're doing woodworking and you're power sanding, wash off your water bottle before you turn back inside. Just as a note, if that's part of what your life is. I mean, unless you want to consume some wood dust. <laughs> I don't want this oak. Well, these oak, this oak dust in my mouth. I don't mm. want it. I would say that's one way to get wood in your mouth. Look, I was gonna say uh, that's your daily dose of fiber. <laughs> and numbers just sweet teeth special. That's so. I already drank. I gotta change my posture anyway because I was sitting in an uncomfortable position because I'm and I got not smart. And I gotta drink again. Yes, you gotta drink again. All right. I'll switch my posture to something worse. <laughs> switch my posture to something worse. All right. So when we left off with these amazing group of misfits. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot. As is out tonight. If they are not feeling very well. We really, really hope they feel better soon. If they're watching, we love you very much. We miss you so much. Get better. Come back soon. Um, but we are going to have. We're going to be kind of sidelining. Nath, trying to keep her out of trouble, but you know, if they all die, Nath dies too. So just say. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can handle the engine room. I mean, how much harder is an engine compared to a human body? Yeah, sure. You keep on thinking that. That's good. That's a good thing to think. That's a really good thing to think. Hey, I mean, I did fine taking care of a human body, and I have no medical training. Yeah, but didn't you spend like a lot of plot points and stuff? <laughs> mud and sticks. Mud and sticks. Mud you and someone sticks. Okay. With mud and sticks. And, and, no, and, no, and maybe no. some tampons. It's it's oh, not right. about what I know. No you know. We we have have it it in canon, there were no tampons. I know. We I was gonna say. I don't. I think he refused them. No, that's well, right. It was the uh, uh, they were it was torn shirt. It was shirts. Torn that's what it was. Yep. I just want to. I just be very fair. Very fair. What I have to spend to make something happen only proves the point that if I want it to happen, I can make it happen. That is true. Some reason fair, I I've it. done the same thing to get to get ten over on rolls. I've done it three times to just do what I want I, to make I've happen. I've done it twice. Yeah, that's this game, baby. <laughs> yep, this is definitely a game of you. Look, it's 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 all about who's. Dice pool is bigger for the most part. To be fair, the be two fair, times uh, I have done it were when the main people <clears throat> that would normally handle that situation were uh, out. <laughs> that is true. I mean, that's it's a big deal being able to... <clears throat> that's one of the nice things of the versatility of this game is the fact that even if your pilot is gone, <laughs> if you have someone with just the pilot skill they can using using plot points they can literally spend enough plot points to make them a decent pilot for at least one scene <laughs> i mean she is a decent pilot she's got a d8 in it oh, yeah, you're actually I, and i have a specialty in transports yeah. so which makes oh, perfect yeah, fly, sense yeah. 
And do we need a recap for the previous session? Sure. Who wants oh, to yeah. do a recap? Cool. I got it. I was like, okay. okay. I was like, so what? So last session we finished meeting up with, you know, Mariana's Ready? old. Two minutes. Yep. The last session we finished meeting up with Mariana's old family friend who, you know, gave us a new transponder and everything. As we made it back to our ship to install said transponder, we were met with some uh, unsavory people. Uh, one introduced themselves as the head of security for this station. The other one was essentially just, you know, one of his compatriots. And they pretty much gave us an option. Either we do a job for Niska to pay off all the fines we've incurred, especially because we besmirched his honor, so to speak. Niska, I mean, because we didn't, you know, ask for permission. You know, none of that stuff. The dock uh, with an license ship. Or we could pay 400,000 credits, which is literally more than what our ship's worth. So after some debate, we decided to end up taking a job, took the missiles, got them all loaded. And then Clayton tried very hard to end up becoming one of Niska's uh, grunts, essentially. Because you got to start from grunts. Really oh. <laughs> but Nis but they were literally saying, like, you ain't got what, you don't have anything Niska needs. So we got everything loaded up, and Clayton actually recognized that what we had on board were ship to ship missiles that. Could very well become nuclear. Now we are to take them to a planet in the Kaladasa system and offload them. 60 seconds. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I, I talk a lot, but I can still I can still shorten my speeches. <laughs> so you guys um You hadn't just departed Niska's yet, had you? No, we literally ended off with Corey as Clayton describing the missiles and mm -hmm. us a oh shit type yeah. moment. I, yeah, I, I think that's what we're words out. were I think we'd actually be safer if they were nuclear. Yeah. <laughs> I think those were the last words, something around that. Yeah, it was it was, that was about the last words there, because at least you know something a nuclear like randomly go off. So Jonathan. Yep. Atlas has been basically sitting in the med bay this entire time. As it sounds like he should have been. Yep. <laughs> and he did see... Oh, by the way, you get another plot point, Kel. Mm -hmm. And as you you saw, some guy... You know, the crew was gone for a time. When they finally came back, they actually were talking about, you know, cargo, blah, 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 blah. And you saw people bring in quite a bit of cargo, actually. Yeah, about 40 tons. Mm -hmm. And after it was all loaded in and strapped down, uh, Clayton was taking a look at it. And after you made sure that everyone was off the ship, I'm assuming you were coming down to check and see what, what was up. Because you're <clears throat> supposed to be moving on as quick as possible. As you came down to see what's up, you basically overhear Clayton <laughs> telling everyone the, what the cargo with a thousand, was. With a thousand yard stare, describing the size, the yield, how many are here, and what their capabilities are. And from the size of the pallets, what I say, they were stacked four wide, and there were, no, there were three wide, and they were four tall. So each pallet has 12 of those missiles and there was two pallets or three pallets? There were three pallets. Three? Yeah, three pallets. So, yep. There are three pallets. And these missiles are like not small. These are like, they're the cases themselves are almost 20 feet long. And they, they're not light either. You like... You would be. Oh, you're not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You'd have to use <laughs> like your. You have to use the cargo system to move these things around. Mm -hmm. They're fucking. Yep. But they're also mag locked to the pod, and the pod has security devices on them to keep people from tampering with it. Someone else has to come in with a code to unlock them and get them off your ship. Yep. So you couldn't even hide these bitches. And they are distinctly marked. Well, they are distinctly covered of a former marking that uh, 
I picked out pretty clearly. Yeah, yeah. These are former oh, alliance. Yeah, all the alliance markings have been like this heavily sprayed over with black spray paint. <laughs> it's not even a good job. I mean, I guess that's one way to do it. Where's this going? Back the way you came. <laughs> no, because you think that. Yeah, well, now we're because we were in Georgia, so this is going to Kaladasa. Yeah, we're still in Georgia, technically. Yeah, we're at the yeah. Last that was actually Georgia. where you were supposed to be going, wasn't it? Though. No, we were originally going to go to. Uh... Fuck, hold on. I could have sworn you were going to go to the Georgia system first, and what then because we were, were we were going to. Oh no, you're, that's right. Your choices were go to Georgia or go all the way out to Blue Sun. Yeah, well, no, it was Kaladasa or Blue Sun because we were in Georgia system already because we were on Hera, which or Murphy, which is in the Georgia system. No, there you mm -hmm. got it, got it now. Yeah, my brain is not the not working no more. Well, don't help when you have five systems in this game, like Star Systems. I mean, it's hard to keep track of some of them. Oh yeah, but on one we were probably gonna have to go to the Kaladasa system anyway to fuel up as a halfway point before going to Blue Sun. The other option was to try and go all the way to Blue Sun without stopping. Which, which was risky as shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because even though it's technically going to be a longer trip, it's more safer for us to do it this way. Yeah. The only problem is that by doing it this way, we do risk running into the Alliance. But now that we have a transponder, <laughs> we should be in a much better situation. Yeah, yeah, but depending on orbit, there's a, it, if we go off the map we've been using, there's going to be at least, out of character, I mean, there's going to be at least two uh, Alliance outposts. Oh, yeah. Well, those outposts are also always moving. Yeah. yeah. And the biggest thing the there. biggest thing is that you're still in patrolled space. Yeah. That's uh, the shitty huh? part. Now, to get to Kaldasa, you have to you're going to be leaving patrolled space, mm -hmm. but you're at the edge of the border in Georgia, and you're going to be heading for, or trying to get to somewhere outside of the the, the core worlds, and there's alliance outposts, yeah. there's listening posts, there's everything out there, and not to mention just general alliance patrols you're going to have to get by. So what is your first uh, thought? What do you first... <laughs> What are you trying to think of and what you're trying to what what type of actions do you want to take as you're like you're basically done fueling up they loaded on your actual supplies that they promised you and you you your the actual like the actual supplies for the for the trip as well as gave you the fuel that you they said they give you and you know everything that they provided is there and on board like, they wanted you I'm to leave as soon as possible yeah, I'm trying to remember real quick. I know they were obviously giving us enough food to last the trip, and then some. It was like um, three months worth of food, actually. Yeah, it was like the basic rations, not the yeah, fan yeah, bill. Yeah, nothing uh, fancy, were, just just were protein. They, weren't they giving us uh, munitions as well, just in case? No, or, no, no. no. Just double check it. You never know. They're not going to give you guns. Hey, you, if we get you, boarded, you never know. If you get you boarded, think that was you're fucked. fucked. <laughs> no, I haven't been boarded by the Alliance. I haven't been boarded by like scavengers. If you get boarded by scavengers, oh, you're fine. We're fine. <laughs> no, we're fine if we get boarded by scavengers. We have guns. And we have three people who are former mil four people who are former military. I think we'll be okay. How many? And Mariana's how many unhinged. So she'll kill lots them? of people. <laughs> yeah, that's also, point. Wait, 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 I, wait, I wait, honestly wait, wait, don't know. Guys. I'm gonna be rolling for stupid guys. shit because yeah, right now Mariana is basically fucking unhinged, <laughs> guys. Hold on. Let's let's find a non-violent solution. No guns. Let's just send Mariana to greet them, and she can tell them how much she loves them, and then that part of the ship can explode. No. Oh she, just forms, she just forms a deep, oh. meaningful relationship oh. with yeah. individually, and wow. the universe will take care of it. The, the no, first words does. out of Mariana's mouth should be like, Oh my god, you remind me of my parents. I miss them so much. <laughs> just seeing your face brings joy to my life. Jesus Christ, we just went to a dark place, guy. <laughs> the universal wood chipper just pops up behind him and sucks them in. <laughs> yep. No, not even, not even that. The, the whole ship turns to uh, the alley the Waynes were killed in. Oh, God. <laughs> I think this was in one of the Arkham games. 
I'm just mm. saying we don't need guns, okay? Never there are other evil solutions. Relationship with PCs. That's all no, I've ever but, seen. Yeah, I, I had to ask everyone because I can't remember that part because I know we had some, but I just can't remember how much ammunition we had though for the just the op cans. Eh, it's not a big deal. It's not like we really count rounds. <laughs> eh, fair. If you if put it this way, if something bad happens on one of your rolls, guess what happened? You ran out of ammo. Cool. <laughs> That's what I get. I just figured I'd ask for it logistics. Is, it is. It is a. It, this is. Remember, this is a heavily narrative game. Logistics are based around story rather than actual stats on a character sheet. No, that's fair. I guess like that. Figure I'd ask. No problem. Uh, so, um, yeah, you guys need to come up with a game plan for getting out of here. What What's your game? What is your ideas? What is your game plan for getting? safely out of the core worlds and into the border planets where you can get to Kaladasa. Well, I would say definitely have uh, whoever's not flying on watching long range scanners if we have those operational at this point. Just to keep an eye for any Alliance ships. So we try to steer clear of those. Would I, uh, with me having been in the Alliance, with the Alliance military for so long, would I have an idea of what, like, if I could line up what days, of the, like what day of the week it was, time of year, when I have kind of a loose understanding of having when been the are having on. been a member of the alliance for some time, you know with absolute incredulity that mm -hmm. the reason that they do such a good job of picking up so many smugglers is because the nature of their patrols and dates times rotations everything like that is one of the most closely guarded old secrets the alliance keeps i'm assuming that's not a secret i learned during my spying fuck no yeah i figured <laughs> so before we get very far i believe from the stuff i spent last time i was around we now have crybabies on the ship i'd like to set one of them up to be prepared to broadcast an alliance frequency SOS using one of the, the frequencies we gathered from the planet, because there's like lots of military frequencies we now had access to. Yep. So that if I need to, I can push a button and very far away from us, an alliance military vessels will be broadcasting an emergency SOS, all hands on deck need assistance. Oh yeah, yeah. we still have like what, two of those? I know two we used one for the left. radioactive isotope. Two crybabies left. Okay. So let's do, let's uh, go ahead and Jonathan, you got to make me a roll on this. So let me get you a thing. Now, what are you going to be using to, to number one, are you going to set this up just as a general radio frequency from the crybaby? Oh no, I'm using one of the Alliance frequencies we got from that planet. Yeah, but I mean, you're just using the frequency you're going to put out a general SOS. Well, you know, an SOS coming from a military transponder code. Yeah. Got it. I'm just making sure. Yeah, I don't like how that sounds. <laughs> Call me paranoid, but you're paranoid, but I don't blame you. I am too with that with that phrasing. Now I would say once John is not there, but I would probably be considering I was messing with the uh sit support anyway, I'd probably be the one manning that to keep an eye for any alliance patrols as we you know go through the verse. All right. Oh, well, I, I would like to check all of our supplies for any kind of bugs. For anything to listen to us, anything to be monitoring us, anything to track us beyond what they can clearly track with um, with the cargo, more than likely. Um, all right, can give, track us. Me a dice pool for what you want to do with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you want me to roll, Ray? Give me your logic for your dice pool. Oh, okay. Um, Remember, you guys make your dice pools. I make my dice pool. And so if you give me the logic for why you're using it and it fits, then cool. Well, so the attribute's not really going to matter so much, but I, I can see him since they're all going to be a D anyways, kind of using a mix between like his knowledge of how to program and sort of like the social manipulation of what it should look and sound like to make the right call. But again, they're the same dice, so I don't think it matters. Um, this is him planning ahead of time. So I'm, I'm using my big plans personality feature. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to use operate since I'm actually trying to like program this to actually read as a valid, legitimate alliance code. Um, Good enough. 
and I'm just going to have it broadcasting like an SOS so that uh, they wouldn't anticipate being able to actually make a, you know, like like the Morse code kind of SOS, not like, does it make sense? Yes. So they would anticipate they're not going to be able to get good radio contact if the person's broadcasting and encode it like an encryption like that, because otherwise they would have just broadcast out with words. Got it. Um, now, let me, I'm going to use... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Fish. I'm going to use the ship software to help me with this, and then I'm going to use the Crybaby asset. Okay. So this is what I will tell you now. Okay. I set up and rolled my dice pool. I actually spent one plot point to keep an extra die. I spent that before I rolled. I was okay. debating whether I should keep it or not, but I did. Um, my total is 25. Okay. I rolled in fucking insanely well. That does not bode well for us. Potentially. Yeah, like three of my dice were one point off max. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm literally looking at your dice pool right now, Ray. I got roll 20 up. All right, I'm going to use a plot point ahead of time to use my... Uh, my what about, I, I forget, what they're called talents, whatever. And um, I might end up using a big damn hero dice in a second. We'll see. Oh, you're talking about your distinction traits? Yeah, distinction traits. Yeah, there we go. See, it's been so long. I forget what everything's called. Or triggers is the actual term, I think. Yeah. Hey, look at that, Ray. You got two ones. Are you happy? Yep. Oh. You got two plot points. Aw. Oh, you have no. no idea how happy I am that I have two plot points. <laughs> and you said you oh. got a 20, right? 25. 25. Um, so I'm going to spend my big Ouch. damn hero die. Oh. Oh. So that's a 22. Uh, You can beat it if you spend an extra plot point and take the four. Oh, wait, no, you kept the four already. No, you didn't. It was a seven and a five you kept. No, I have the four also. Oh, you already had the four? Yeah, three would just tie. Is this the one where, where we I went on a tie? No, you have to beat. I have to beat. Uh... But if you, of course, beat it by five, you raise the stakes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Um, Who had the thing to let them avoid ones? I don't. No, I don't think it was something that we. I don't think it's something that we had. It was uh, how we ruled the point redemption for. Uh, what was it? I think it was. Oh no, no, that was yeah, that was for the. Uh, the lend a hand, I think, is what we did. The hands that. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, lend we did. Yeah, can, we can add one to it. And makes it not a that one. Ever, that one in particular. Oh, you yeah, know, say that one. That was the one where you changed a one to max. That's what you said it was. <laughs> yep. Because mm. both Jess and Numbers used that on me last time. I mean, I could probably, maybe have a slight chance, but I don't think it's going to work. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut my losses where I'm at. You're keeping at 22? Can I help? Are you going for the 20, uh, 26 with the expanding for the extra floor? Did we lose Jonathan? Oh, I'm, I'm here. Okay. I'm well, wondering if, if, you answered, if, you, if you answer, I didn't hear you. Oh, no. Like I, I heard in the background somebody saying, can I help? And I was waiting to figure out what they were trying to oh, say. And absolutely you can help. I'm wondering, I was building a dice pool, so I need a small reminder of what we're trying to accomplish so I can see if I have an ability to help. Oh, uh, Jonathan was attempting to set up the cry babe. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. No, he was attempting, attempting to set up the crybaby to broadcast on the Alliance frequency. Yeah. Well, oh, sorry. what would it take for me to add a D8 to their pool? Um, you, you would have to pick my, a... my skill of no Alliance tactics. 
You just I have, have a, to point I have in. A line of knowledge. The downside is you already see that I rolled two ones. You're going to suffer from any complications as well. I'm already being hunted. <laughs> that is a fair point. They do know he's alive. They know that I am alive and I am being actively... Well, as of right now, they know I'm alive. So are you going to lend the D8? I'm willing to, yeah. I don't care. All right. So go ahead and roll a D8, Jonathan. <laughs> but, uh, what will it... Uh, what will it cost me? How many plot points? That's oh, no, it, does, it doesn't cost you anything. Nothing. Oh, you, just you, just have, you just have to suffer the consequences of the roll like Jonathan does. Yeah. Done. So are you going to well, spend the plot point to keep that one, Jonathan? Uh, yeah. It'll... Oops. it'll will get us high enough. So that makes it a 22 plus 6 is a 28. Um, are you going to keep the 4 wait, as wait, well? You know, what? you know what? I'm going to go ahead and keep the 3 now because then I'll get my big damn hero die back. Yeah, and, and it'll be 5. You're welcome, sir. There you go. Yep. All right. And so you still got the consequences. Now, what complication? They'll never oh, come them. up. All right, so <laughs> as, as Jonathan, as you're setting anything up, uh, uh, Clayton, you're kind of like walking by and you see he's setting up one of the crybabies and you can see that he is uh, setting up uh, the radio on the crybaby to broadcast out um, basically an SOS from an alliance ship. Um, one thing you recognize right away is that he is broadcast. He is setting up to broadcast from as an alliance ship, but he is not setting it up with any type of call signal, call sign, anything like that, yeah, that would be uh, recognized yeah. by the Alliance as an actual Alliance broadcast. Um, You're going to want to put this in right here. I'm just going to lean over and be kind of add a little... Yeah. That will make that seem far more authentic, and uh, I think that'll give us a lot of fun. Yeah. Basically, it's just a little code that you tag on to the transmission that, that marks it as a recognized Alliance emergency broadcast frequency, rather than just a generic help I, I, I am going to take this moment to be like, why, why that? What exactly does that mean? Like, I started asking probing questions so I could understand why he just did what he did. I explained that this is a proper modern, like, call sign for an alliance help signal. This is, this will seem more authentic than just about anything else you could do. This is what my crews would have put out if we were in trouble. And it's basically you're using like a medical emergency call signal is what you're using. Effectively, yeah. Yeah. Did he put in the name of a ship, or is that not part of what I he's would I would say I would have. I could have put in a random ship, any random ship that I. I mean, couldn't have been my ship, but I'm sure eight years and being someone who is effectively a field lieutenant, I have enough knowledge of ships that would be traveling, that could easily. Now, could it be? Would they check in with that ship? Maybe? Actually, having been at the Battle of Serenity, hmm, what would my call sign be? I would have a call sign for, like, mm -hmm. for me specifically. And basically, call sign, it's just an ID. Yeah. It's like a code that you put in. I put in, I put in my own info. <laughs> as long as we launch it the opposite direction where we're going, cool because i mean one to do so that'll even make it juicier for him that's one way to do it yep that's one it's way awesome. to guarantee you get some attention yep <laughs> put put it put a traitor put a traitor calling for help <laughs> i mean okay they'll probably yeah. blast you instead of helping by the way hey i have fallen and i can't get up please come get me <laughs> willing to turn myself well, in <laughs> on the plus side uh if they destroy the crybaby they think you're dead yep now yeah. just just to be clear Ray, mm. the frequency we're using to communicate with a crybaby to trigger it needs to be something that's outside of the normal monitored range bands you can actually just put it on a timer you don't even have to but communicate. Least I'd, I'd really rather it go off when we need it not just like at an inopportune moment because inopportune could be like after we needed it three hours ago when they've already detained us and locked us up, or it could be like three hours before we ever meet anybody. So they've already gone, destroyed the crybaby, and then we get picked up by it. I, I need to be able to like I mean, trigger you, it. You can still do a timer and just the timer doesn't start until you throw it out the airlock. 
No, no, but he's, he's, already, he's already talked about that. You already understood that part. Uh, okay. Jonathan, one of the things you could use that would not be as traceable, but could have the potential to backfire is you oh. could use the NavSat transmitter, which transmits your coordinates normally. And you could throw the signal on the NavSat to send to the crybaby to trigger it. One swift, one short burst. But if anyone else gets hit by that burst, it's going to fuck up their NavSat for a few moments. But that's not our problem, right? It's well, it's the same thing that they did when they were the ship was marooned in space. Okay. And they, and they, they set their NavSat to just broadcast uh, their SOS, which fucked up the other ship's nav navigational system. They had to find out what was causing it. So they had to trace the signal back. But this is not going to be a continuous transmission so like that was yeah, there. Yeah, really trace it back. Yeah, this is going to be just a one signal going start your operation type shit. Great. Sounds fine. All right. Yeah, not our problem. <laughs> Look, I, I don't have to worry about the welfare of other crews, just mine. Yep. 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 And they're not really my crew, they're her crew, but like I'm on the ship. <laughs> look, look. It's that's a technicality. Yeah, you guys are my crew, but by being on the crew, they're still technically your crew. Yeah, could you well. not call us your crew though? Because we want to live. <laughs> <laughs> we are bodies occupying a space. <laughs> I, I would I would personally <laughs> I would prefer to keep like a very professional worker employee relationship so I can live. Wow. That, man, Jonathan, you're you're a Jonathan's spicy. like, did I mention I'm union? <laughs> Damn. You know, right. you know, as a union Listen. member, in the middle of the alliance trying to board us, I think that's a great time to start the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on strike. <laughs> I just like lock the helm. So about the pay scale that I'm getting, I'm thinking like a thirty percent raise. Oh, no. Well, that sounds like it. As soon as we get boarded by the alliance, we just uh, mutiny. <laughs> you can have her. You can have her. Wow. <laughs> I'm the not the one who's a war criminal. Hey, I am not the one who's a war I criminal. I would never argue that I was not a war wait, criminal. Wait, wait. I don't did, did you help, did, did you help listen, loot listen, alliance it, bodies for those vests? No. No. I listen, giving, giving you over to the alliance isn't about who's the bigger criminal. It's about making sure that your character has an embedded hatred for the rest of us so that we have plot armor to live forever. Yep. <laughs> plot armor to live forever. All right. So you've got the crybaby set up. Um, what were you doing? Oh, I, you I, did have a, I did have a question. Uh, you're building a dice crab. pool. Okay. Oh, yes, I was uh, building a dice pool. Of... Shit, four. Hold on. I, <laughs> we've gone so far that, let me, if I look at it again, I can tell you. Um, we, went, we went so far sideways that now we're backwards. Yeah, pretty much. That's how it goes when you spin out. Uh, yeah. And then uh, whenever it comes using, to looking at this, uh, or again, the cent looking at centers and all that from when we start flying, just let me know when I need to roll for that because I've already got the dice pool made up. And you wanted to do what were you going to be looking for? I was pretty much going to be keeping an eye on the scanners to keep, uh, to see if I can notice when any line ships are come by. Um, I've already got my dice pool figured out. Hopefully, it works the way I want it to. Okay. Nope. God damn it. I'm, okay, I love how my brother's cat gets my computer, but my cat just <laughs> you know wanders all over. All right. Did you figure out what it was for, Corey? I'm trying to see. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that should have been a D10 for the no alliance, the no alliance tactics and such. A D10, not a D8. I used a couple episodes to bump it up a while got back. It, got it. So it should have been a D10. I don't think you're going to, even if you were to roll it. I, what did you roll on that D8, Jonathan? I think it was six. Even if you rolled a 10, that wouldn't have bumped you up to it to like 10 over would it uh well if you rolled a 10 it would have meant i wouldn't have to have spent the plot point for the three but like it's kind of already done at this it's, point yeah, yeah, I, it's fine. i'm just uh, I, I mentioned it i mentioned it because it was a d8 for so long and i just rolled i rolled that die already uh actually rolled all my dice already i, I just can't remember what for i know what i was using was mental uh veteran unification war 
and no alliance tactics, but I can't remember what the fuck I was rolling for. I can't either. We can hold up in a second of that, and if you remember, we can jump I back rolled a 20. <laughs> I rolled, if I use all three dice, I roll a 20. Uh, otherwise, it's a 15, which is not too bad. Uh, but uh, hold it. Uh, Continue, and I will try to think of it. Sure, sure. I'll just take a second. I'll think about it. So, um, the other thing you need to contemplate and you need to think about is what is... Oh, no, I remember what it was for, Corey. I actually remember what it was for now. Um, you were trying to discern if you could figure out what the schedules and stuff like were going to be like for oh, the Alliance patrols. If I could roundabout get an idea mm -hmm. of trying to figure out, hey, if we go this direction at this point in like how we can avoid yeah. some patrols. Yeah. Wait, you I know what? What? I can help you out. <laughs> Give, you kind of D10 to load me? <laughs> I, I, I do actually have a D10. I have no navigation at a D10. I got these star charts memorized. I know how people like to fly through space. I am a pilot. I took a no skill that matters for me. Hey, you know, combined, our skills are really fucking useful for traveling through space undetected. Realistically, we have a good combination here. Okay, I'm, 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 just, like, I'm just like, oh, no, no, you don't understand. Like, these are the better paths to travel through. This is like the, you know, like, I'm just like, just laying all that stuff out for you. Okay, I'm going to say... You owe me because I did not roll a single one, and all of my dice are a five or five or more. I mean, so you I owe me. I did roll ones. Ones are amazing. Sometimes you get plot oh, points. Oh, I did get two plot points, didn't I? Neat. I'm going to use both of those to keep all of my dice. Wait, do you get plot points if you were helping as well, or just a complication? Complication affects me. No, I know, but he bought the complications from me. You just also suffer them. Oh yeah, that, it can yeah. Suck. I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. I will uh, use. I will bump myself down to four plot points. Sorry, I, I was thinking that was the case. If I, I had to I, buy I them off of both of us, it wouldn't be quite as big of a gamble, you know? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm still gonna go ahead and just buy all of my dice here. Although, in fairness, it is kind of rare to get ones when you're rolling dice that are, you know, like not d sixes and d fours. Yeah, it's so a lot, yeah. this is what's up, Corey. You have an opportunity on this roll. Cool. Okay. Well, speaking um, of ones. Yeah. And the total that I've got is higher than yours. I got a 21. Oh, my new total after adding that additional D10, spending the plot points to buy all of my dice. I currently have a. Uh, that's going to be. 28. 14 so you, and 14. You beat it by five. So sorry, uh, four, uh, do 14 a, do you have 14 and 12. 26. Okay. I still beat by five. No problem. Yeah. Do you have a, a D12 big damn hero? I do not. You do I do now. now. Yep. Sweet. Let me mark that down real quick. Now I have an eight, a ten, and a twelve. Yeah, I had a really bad roll. Um, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, you beat it by five. So let's see. You got a complication. So I'll stage. I'll stage that down by one. Cool. Okay. Actually, <clears throat> you can determine your complications. There are two options. Okay. You can either give a complicate. Uh, you can get a, get an opportunity, which means you can give yourself a condition for this situation that you can use for further roles, or you can stage down the complications that you got from Jonathan's role by one. Go. First choice, choice one, take the opportunity. It doesn't stage anything down for Jonathan. Yeah, that was my, I was like, hmm. But, but I wasn't telling him to stage it down. I was telling him not to stage it down. I told him to take the opportunity. Yeah, no, I am gonna take the opportunity. Yeah. Right. So yep. you need to, so no, so fashion me a D8 opportunity that you would have for the rest of the scene based around the actions you're taking. I think between the opportunity would be. Sweet tea special. Yeah, between the two of them. Hey, sweet tea. Oh, that's so good. A little bit sweet, of sweet tea redeemed a sweet tea. Oh. 
Okay. How you doing, sweet tea? Oh, I need to get some. Oh. Oh, thank you for the stretch. That was good. All right. So, yeah. So you need to think of come up an idea for the for the opportunity that you have. Because remember, it's going to stick with you for the rest of the scene. Rest of the scene. Rest of the episode. The scene. 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 Okay. Make it true. Now you can buy a use a plot point to buy it if you want to keep it for the rest of the episode. I'm good. I'm fine. Um, I'm down to four, and me consistently being above four is rare. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep myself around that right now. Uh, let's say that between both of our work uh, I have currently plotted us a course that will keep us and this will be this is what we're that's what the role is for is for us to find a path through that'll be mm-hmm. you know less likely to get I'll say for the rest of this scene I have a D8 to I, I have what I'm looking for here yeah, you need like a catchphrase represented. Yeah. It's going to be, uh. uh knowledge is power? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, uh, man, I'm almost there. I've almost got a name for it because I know what I want to say. And I've got a name for it. It's, um. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Clayton is such a perfect person for ca- for terrible referential catchphrases because he loves media. That's his, like, thing outside of medicine is media. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I can see the Matrix. Okay. I can see the Matrix. That's, uh, or I, I can read the code kind of thing. I uh, The D8 being that if we have to role for navigate something to do with us actually making this trip mm-hmm. starting to travel uh that d8 i i can clearly see at this point ex- the best path for us to take for say the next two so days if next two can, days travel to keep well, us clear say, if you can make it, it's, it's a scene so it's however long a scene of this travel of you traveling from here to that planet lasts um so what i was going to say is if you can you would be able to apply that scene to anything that d8 role to anything involving like having to change tra- change your course uh having to you know if we have like someone else something else happens and some alliance cruisers show up for some reason mm-hmm. then you can use that to like try and avoid them like you know yeah. this is what we have to do to avoid them yeah all right but I'm, he's beginning to believe he's very well. is that, that is that is the thing he is beginning to believe okay neo You know I, I have. You know I have a, a Matrix RPG, right? I will play a one shot in that any time you ask me. I will. I will skip work for the day. I'll do it. <laughs> you don't understand how deep my love for that series goes. It's a Matrix RPG. Anything other than a one shot game? <laughs> no, it is. It you can be campaign because. You yeah, you could. Because it's based off of the old cyberpunk system. Um, everything is on percentages. That and works. the thing you don't start out with is a, a skill called belief. You start out with zero, and to get your first point in to when you when you're awoken from the matrix, you start out with a zero one percent chance in belief, and the only way it grows is if you roll under that. Because Matrix goes the the, the the sorry the Cyberpunk rules go from one to ninety nine or zero to ninety nine. Yeah, you never have a hundred. Yeah, and you yeah. And you want to roll low because you want to roll old under your skill. So the higher your skill gets, the the easier it is to roll under it. So you literally have to roll an ot ot to start increasing your belief. You know, with how this game has gone so far, with me not rolling d twenties at all, I've rolled double zeros more than once. I, I, I feel like I would. I have as well. I feel like I've done it once so far. Yeah. 
but okay. So yeah, anything that we need for uh for like trying to avoid the alliance for the rest of the scene. Mariana, have you thought of anything you want to do to prepare for this trip? I legit have no clue right now. Sure, no problem. They, Lissa they've is not a captain. <laughs> she, uh, Mar Mariana would like to spiral. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a free action. <laughs> Mariana would like to sit in her cabin and rock back and forth. <clears throat> But sucking on her thumb. <clears throat> seriously, though, if she rolls ones on on her dice pool to rock back and forth, how bad is the complication going to be? <laughs> She's stuck sideways in the fetal position. That I, actually, I was going to say that that one's an immediate uh, sending on a grippy sock vacation. <laughs> well, I don't know. You might be able to counter it if you have plushies, squishmallows. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. I've got mellows. Tentacle? Tentacle? A tentacle squishmallow? No, oh, <laughs> it's it's a puppet hand. Oh my I've got, god. I've got I don't put it away. Put it away. <laughs> because the running joke is tentacles follow me everywhere when I saw them at Gen Con. I think you bought And Corey. I recognize them because one of my former DMs uh, does their TikTok work? Wait, did you buy that Gen Con the most recent one? Yeah. I don't remember <laughs> seeing you with that. It, like, yeah, because I bought them on the... Sunday. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but within reach, there is a Squishmallow. Okay. So, do, right. I, do I get advantage on my roll? <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to do is this. Uh, no, what I was going to say is this for Mariana. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is you're at, as you're as a ship's captain and a working ship's captain for a while you could try and use your connections to try and keep an idea of where the alliance are during the trip sure you know, anyone anyone countering any alliance, anyone encountering anyone getting bordered and searched, looking to want to shave as much time off my trip as I can. Don't want to don't don't want to waste any time with the purple bellies if I can help it. Um, do, 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 do. I got guild trader shadow of the guild. Gain one plot point when your decision to go against the trade guild's policies, practices, or orders puts you in danger or hot water. Sure. I would say this situation puts us in danger. Yes, it does. <laughs> so let's go ahead and build a dice pool on that. Okay. Now to use that ability of it, you do have to spend up. You said you get a plot point for that. I get a plot point for that. Yeah. So if you're, you're so rolling with that D8, then will help you build that plot point. Um, so it's going to be social because you're going to okay. be reaching out to people. It's going to be that distinction, which is a D eight. It's going to be uh, navigation is going to be your skill. Uh, which is another D eight. I think mm -hmm. maybe Wait, you said navigation. Yes. Is it navigation, Jonathan? I'm sorry. For Fly. What? Yeah, so there's no navigation skill that can be your Wait. specialty in a skill, but it's not a skill itself. Well, I literally have no trade guild. I'm so sorry. What was the dice pool? Like, 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 what are you trying to build for? I thought there was a navigation skill. No, nope. so I have I have no navigation. Like, navigation is a specialty of no. So, like, I understand oh, how gotcha, to. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. I have no trade guild, which would is a specialty for me. So I add a d4 to it, right? No. No. You would add another D6. Yeah, another D6. D6. Okay. Wait, really? Yeah, for specialties, it's a D6. Oh, shit. It's a free D6, yeah, like, so you jump but, into the dice pool. But the thing, though, was like, I can only give you one die, so I can either give you my D10 and no, or I can give you the D6. I was better giving you the D10. Like, I can't hand you both if I'm helping you. Like, does it make sense? No, I think Corey was saying that because they probably had a specialty they could have used. In oh, specialty oh. is in no... Alliance protocols like me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, that's on me. That's on me because I would I would have had an additional D six to that last roll. 
Thank you, because we haven't dealt with specialties a lot. It's not something I've had to deal with. I was wondering where the size of the pool you were building was coming from, but I was like, ah, it's probably his distinctions, his triggers. Oh, you know. most, mostly it is, because uh, I have one that lets me spend a plot point to throw one of my skills into, a, into the die pool. Yeah, I have specialty in, uh, in no and shoot. I have it in fly and no, so. All right. All right. Uh, are there any more that I'm adding to this? Because I've got four right now. <laughs> I don't know. It all depends on what you think you can add into it. I'm going to throw my D8 up there. My uh, specialty D8 that I have right now. Go ahead and throw a D8 in there. Yeah. I'm already there. Complications out the ass. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. So you, you get your attribute for, for sure. Your skill for sure. You either get to add your distinction or a D four, so yeah, one of those distinction. Two. And because she yep. had her distinction, she triggered it for the plus one plot point. Yep. And then, and then once you've done those three, which is like your basic die pool, you add your D six for a specialty, and then any signature assets that apply. I just have the one right now. What is it? Which is my secret dash. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so then then I who all lent her aid? Corey, you, you dropped a D8, you said? Mm-hmm. Yep. Jonathan dropped the D10? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I gave you my D10. I haven't done anything with Got what it. she's so doing. So you have another D8. Okay. So you have five dice, I do believe. I mean, yep. All right, so all right. go ahead and roll five. Hey, okay. Did you get any ones? No. Thank God. I talk a big game. I, I I'm realizing now. I think I have. Yeah. What was that about being okay? With more complications. I was just. I just did the math in my head. Okay. What's the target number I gotta hit? Uh, thirteen. Okay, so that's already with just the two, um, because I've got an eight and a six right here. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's gonna get it to. And then I've got another six, a five, and a three. So now you have so. to decide. Right now you've beaten the TN, but to in order to A, get a big damn hero dice, and B, be able to step it up in any way, shape, or form, you have to raise the stakes, which means you have to beat it by five. And to do okay. that, you're going to have to spend a plot point to keep one of the other dice. Um, so I'm just going to spend one because I've got a six right here to mm-hmm. add. Um, and yeah. Got it. So that's a total of 20. So that increases. So you beat it by what, over five, but it not didn't double it. So now you're going to get a big damn hero dice, which is a D12, which is the highest dice. Okay. Do you already have a D12? Nope. Okay. So you have a D12 big damn hero dice. <clears throat> now, at least I didn't give you any opportunities but there goes that um so you're raising the stakes on this you basically reach out to a lot of your contacts guild buddies but you're basically doing the whole i'm calling in a favor and you are going to be able to Depending on the situation, you will be able to get some foreknowledge of where the Alliance are running their patrols and get some foreknowledge on where the Alliance should be so you can avoid those routes. Okay. And if those routes change and someone else witnesses it, then you should be able to get some knowledge of that. All right. So I think everyone's taking... Oh, and Kel, your stuff is going to happen when you're actually in transit, so we'll roll it then. Okay. All right. So other than that, I don't think anyone else has anything else they needed to do this time. I know Oz is going to have a bunch of stuff they wanted to do, but I'll probably get with them separately and have them like do me some roles because they were going to, I know they wanted to get some, some stuff for the ship done. Oh, outside of the, outside of this. Oh, no. What I built that pool for, I built it to see if they had left any trackers in any oh, of yeah. the supplies they gave us. 
You can. So with my twenty-eight. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, I think you have to build a new pool because now you use. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. The cargo. Yeah, there's crackers in it. Well, duh. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to notate where they were. Not not their cargo. The supplies they gave us. All the food, the water, all of that. I'm trying to see if there are any notable trackers for in any of that. Okay. So yeah. my thought is that after we do the job, it would be far easier to just fucking kill us. That is where Clayton's head is at. Is there's a real possibility that this psychopath might just kill us afterwards. And if we're not able to be tracked, if at least that's taken care of, cool. If I can just dump some supply boxes once we hit once we hit the ground, cool. I dump some supply boxes. So I can build it. That was my original okay. desire. There. You have an opportunity. I can build. Cool. And you can build. Uh, I will. And I'll tell you what the chat the target okay. number is. So I'm going to go with uh, well, clearly mental, and I'm going to use my. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use my uh, veteran unification war, having been pro having been someone who's probably been involved with putting these kind of things in, or having found them before X Y Z. I know what they look like. Whatever. You're medical. Uh, I was medical, but I was also in the front lines. Yeah, I've See, seen Mark stuff be tracked. I've seen things put on things. Why is happening with more me? It's true. I cannot use that distinction. Actually, could I use on the run? More. That's more appropriate. That's more. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, no, I'll use on the run. And uh, is there a search or a look option for a skill? As they've been looking for a skill to fit this, they'll probably be notice. Notice, there's what I was looking for. Yep. It's only a D6, but you know what? Okay. And I do have. I'm going to go ahead and spend a plot point. <laughs> I am sitting here trying to use my keyboard on my phone. <laughs> That does not work. Okay. So that's 2d8, d6, and then d12. And I have an opportunity here. Yes. We just got we just got Uno reverse card again by M. <laughs> M doesn't like that I'm making them all self-care. What is the reverse card? It's done nothing. It's just he's, M's making uh, us hydrate. Because uh, I made, made, them, I made hydrate. them hydrate on Beggar Street, so M is making us hydrate. <laughs> so this is basically just like uh, an escalation war. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use that. I lost a dice. You lost a dice. Well, lose a dice. I dropped it on wooden floor and it bounced. Ooh. That'll I have do hard, it. I have hardwood floors, okay? I hope I, it wasn't. I, I, I really hope it wasn't a D4. Uh, no, it is a D8. Okay, that's not is bad. It's a sharp edge, though. No, they are plastic. Everything I okay. Plastic. Well, I I've one... got plastic sharp edge ones. Oh, Guys, all of it, these are pretty cheap. Uh, if it was a D4, it'd be easy to find. It's directly underneath this foot. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, uh, this one is a plastic sharp edge. I gotta say, my nice dice, I don't usually use, and only my nice dice have good sharp edges. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do here. Like, Whatever this is a true and proper caltrop. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> this is a sharp edge D4. Yeah, ow. <sighs> Just thinking about stepping on D4 likes to make my feet hurt. <laughs> Ray, I'm gonna have one more thing I want to do before we get too far. Go for it. Oh, would anyone like to try and help me with this? But yeah. Throwing up on... No. Chat, guys. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't sit. 
sit properly when I'm thinking. Uh, actually, guys. you know what? I, 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 got, I got a punch. I, I want to pull a Corey from earlier. Oh. Without dying, hopefully. There's my posture. I just pulled my chair back. There you go. Oh, posture check. Okay. I'm doing it as a stretch because I need to stretch. Okay. This actually actually helped. This actually helped my back too. Oh. Look, I'm okay, trying not to stretch too much because we're not trying to have uh, Twitch take us down. <laughs> <laughs> if Amaranth can get away with what she wears on sub, I'm sure you're fine. I mean, that's fair. I mean, at least Lissa's thinking for the better of the stream. Yes, yes, and it's appreciated. Where the hell did my roll 20 go? But, we but, do uh, not need a nip slip. <laughs> yeah. But, Ray, were you saying no on the assist for this one? Uh, no, you can always give an assist. Oh, okay, I heard a no. Like, is it you're, like you put a hand up for that part, so that's what I was wondering. Yeah, uh, Corey, you can get a... Uh, let me look at my skills real quick. Uh... Yeah, because you can only get when you help, you can only give a skill, not a distinction, right? Right. Okay. Well, get another D6 for notice then. Okay. Too bad I can't be a distinction that I could use my information broker. I am. I got the I I rolled, rolled, good roll, and now I'm just sucking. I rolled six on both of my D6s. Nice. But a 10 on the D12, and then a three and a two. Oh. <laughs> God, I, man. My total, and this is me spending a plot point to keep an extra die, is 13. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh man, you know what? I will drop myself down to one plot point to buy two dice. You dictate the scene then. Uh huh. Because that is a and the big damn hero dice you get is a d10. I already have a d10. So. Right. Okay, so the way I would like to go about this is I'm going to assume assume that our little spy master probably has something that can chat that can sweep for bugs. If not, our spy master, our other, our uh pilot might know something or be able to rig something up to possibly check for frequencies of uh, actually he's been doing things like this already just uh, things to push out frequencies so i'm assuming we could probably reverse engineer something like that yeah it's really and hard that's... to play with jonathan because he's actually a genius what I, i'm not that smart definitely not genius level <laughs> i'm i'm i I would not even come close to trying to make that claim personally. I would say you have a certain set of skills and it's it shows. <laughs> uh, I would say it shows. It's a positive thing. Uh, but I would say that we, uh, between the three of us, we, as I'm going to search, we rig something up that kind of like, uh, it's not a traditional like, hey, this will find everything, but it'll let us know something's there. And then we pour over that shit. Okay. We searched everything. Got it. Um, you quickly discover that the the cases have trackers on them. Of course multiple they do. trackers. Yeah. yeah. Um uh there's nothing in the cargo. There's nothing in uh, sorry, there's nothing in the food supplies they sent you, there's nothing in the water tanks they sent over, no other trackers. Really? Now in this process, since I'm looking for trackers. Do I find anything on the ship that I can see clearly on the inside? I would like to do another pass once we land. Okay. But something that I could notice inside, whenever they when they dropped themselves, when they like when their guys came in and dropped the cargo, did someone throw something into a little nook or cranny? No, I was saying you were using oh, the skills Jonathan was yeah. sh showing to scan the ship, literally looking for oh, the entire ship. trackers, yeah. anything like so that. Nothing at all. Nothing yeah, at all. Nothing, okay. yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing weird. I mean, like I said, the <laughs> um, yeah, the cargo 
is overloaded with tracking devices. Oh, well, of course. Of course it is. My concern was more or less, hey, we dropped this cargo off. When we start flying off planet, someone just blows us out of the sky because they can track us. If they can't track us directly, we might be fine. We can we can make a getaway. As My concern is I don't trust this guy. Got it. Understood. I mean... You're looking at long range situations at that point, because yeah. if Miska has people on planet in this at this mining station who yeah. are capable of taking your ship out, you'll still die when you take off. Yeah. Oh, I meant us getting off planet, being out, and someone tracking us, then taking us out once we're away from the planet. I mean, making it less obvious. Yeah. They're just thoughts I was having. No problem. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I give everyone like the we're all clear. <laughs> yeah, pretty much you're clear. You don't have anything to worry about with that. Um, but I was gonna say let's go ahead and do this. Uh it, because it's already 9 30. Time flies when you're plotting to how to stay alive. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and start the giveaway for the, the, the raffle giveaways. Raffle take giveaways. So all you have to do is type in the keyword in the chat within the next 20 minutes, and you will be entered to win or enter to get raffle tickets to win this bad boy who is Astarath, the Archdevil of Wrath. He is from Archvillain Games' uh, set, which is called Speak of the Devil. And he is about a nine inch tall overall mini, uh, about a six inch wide base. It's a 4K mini, so it prints out as detailed as you see it in the picture. And we're gonna give this away at the end of the month. We're giving away on our show on the 30th. The last night to get tickets is the Kingdoms of Mist show on the 28th. Um, so be sure you get your tickets in as many as you can get, because you can get tickets every single show. One for followers, two for subscribers. And we are gonna take a 15 minute a break in the meantime so i can go get some more drink and stand up and stretch my legs i was like also when it comes to that many aka mine <laughs> uh -huh, sure <laughs> you 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 do watch almost every single show so you have a high percentage chance yeah right? well, i still i still love how last month crypt had me beat by one ticket and they won yeah. i still love that that was that was awesome but the time before that the person who won uh was uh, C C uh admiral and he only had like I think two, two three or tickets, four like tickets that? in the entire drawing. Yeah. So, time for nuggies. Yes, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in 15 minutes, guys. See you then.
Mazel tov, it's a stream. <laughs> Corey's fine, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> totally fine. We just potentially killed him. <laughs> Actually, we don't even know what the hell's going on. Something broke him outside of the stream. Yeah. They're dying. We, we have no idea. All right. So uh, if you've got two minutes and 45 seconds to get tickets in for our raffle, which, of course, we're giving away... There it goes. We're giving away this many at the end of the month, and you have to get raffle tickets to win. The raffle tickets are giving away every show for a 20 minute period. We are in the last two minutes of that 20 minute period. So be sure you put the keyword into chat and you will be entered to win if you follow us. One ticket for followers, two tickets for subscribers, and we will make the announcement when we're giving that away. But it's going to be on the show on the 30th, um, which is Ivy Shadows DD 5e campaign. So two minutes left. Wait. Corey's that game die. has, I'll say, what's that game has some pretty funny moments. Oh god, yeah, that game is, yeah, especially uh, Mr. Arson, aka our DM here. What? I am, <laughs> I am, a, I'm, I'm a sweet baby angel. That Xavier is no such thing, though. <laughs> Xavier's a fucking psychopath. Yep. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt. You guys are just corrupting Norza. Uh, he's corrupting everyone, if you haven't noticed. He has a plan. Yeah, I'll say more so, y'all, because it went from being like, no, let's not do this, to like, okay, I want to just pick, pocket this dude real quick. Oh, no. Xavier's plan is to basically twist everyone until they're ready to rise up against their overlords so we can just kill everyone and get the fuck out of there. Oh, Z I thought you said Norzo was trying to kill. Okay, I misheard you there. My bad. Mm -hmm. Xavier's got the plan. Norris is just going to be, probably have to be killed, but that's okay. Anyway, I don't want to know. I don't want to check Discord. It's worth it. I have to check it on my phone because Discord on uh, my laptop is doing the weird thing. Where it doesn't where it's not wanting to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. The Dis Discord's uh, been weird as a whole after this latest update. Yeah. I just did that today. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we are back into Crossing the Veil. Um, uh, where we are pretty much, I think, ready to go. Does everyone nope. have their plans in place? I had one more thing I was about to do before. Oh, yeah. No, you were going to do something, Jonathan. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I am going to be asking for one person's help specifically. Um, Kellen's help. <clears throat> okay. What's what I, do you need? I need you to move some stuff around for me and lift heavy objects. <laughs> <laughs> what well, you may seem like you need something like you know something that pertain to my skills, not just to use me as a freaking. You ball. realize I have a higher physical than him, right? <laughs> oh, well, no, but I thought he's the one that has the high labor. No, he my labor is a. My labor is only a six. Oh, oh, mine's a four. That's a cat. Hello. <laughs> Never mind. I guess I'm not using y'all for labor. Y'all's labor sucks. Uh, give me a second. Remember, me my character what... was a feet was a was. I've a, got a uh, six in labor. A field officer. Yeah, I was playing as a field officer. I didn't do labor. <laughs> I'm a fighter. I shoot people and stab them. I don't lift boxes. I'm very. Well, strong. That's just not where my where my skill set lies. Oh, no, I do have a six in labor. Shit. Yeah, I got a six in labor as well. <laughs> Sorry. It's only a six. I mean, it's not great, so maybe maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. But, um, right, the, the last thing I want to do is there's all those uh, things on the, the deals. First, this shouldn't be too hard. I just want to know, are they broadcasting or broadcasting and receiving? They would broadcast and receive if activated. But there's nothing that they need to receive now. No, sorry, you're right. They're constantly receiving. <laughs> okay. So the receiving is probably keeping something else from happening. Probably. And getting up, you know, pinging it, pinging it. And if it doesn't get a ping, then something happens. Cool. Um, is it receiving the same transmissions all the time or different transmissions? 
Mm, pretty much the same transmissions. Oh, pretty much. Sorry. The transmissions <laughs> are... The packet size is roughly the same. But... And you would have to basically descramble them because they are encoded. Well, but the thing is, I don't need to know what the code is. I just need to know if the codes are identical or not. No codes are identical. Okay. Because they're encrypted. And encryption basically is an algorithm which creates a randomized code which is then broken... Well, it's a key code that's broken down by the de-encryption software on the other end. So that it can read the file. And how often do they, they receive stuff? Uh, about every... Two minutes. Okay. Well, I'm just going to start recording what they're receiving. So that later, if I need to, I can run all that through software and see if I can maybe reverse engineer something. In case everything goes horribly, horribly wrong. It in case. You mean in just case. inevitable? Huh? You mean just the inevitable? Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm just, you know, I... Well, let's just let's just go ahead and like have me track and stuff. It's it's that's who I am. I'm always like three steps ahead of things. Mm -hmm. All right, you're on it. Let's start flying. All right, so you guys disengage. Um, you give get, you send out to the tower to get clearance to leave the the port. Um, um, as you guys are you know going through the prep. Um, a voice comes over the comms and it is Taylor and he's like you guys are getting ready to head out huh Mariana did you actually have an interaction with Taylor or was it just uh, Clayton and uh, and uh, which one's Taylor again killed. Taylor was the, the guy who came with the the, uh, the cyborg guy the head of security Niska's tail. Well, he wasn't head of security. He was one of Niska's security guys. Yeah. I was there for a good portion of it. Okay. Yeah, no, she, she, so she does. Yeah. She does know All who right. this guy is. So he's like, so you guys are headed out. We are indeed. He says, All right. It says the timer will start the moment you uh, get underway. You know how much time you got. Understood. He's like, safe trip. Good luck. Don't get stopped. I think we'll be we'll okay. We'll do our best. I think we'll be okay. I hope your thinking is good. And he just cuts out. It's my second highest stat. It's not bad. Your thinking is your <laughs> your thinking is your second highest stat. Yep. I mean, fair. <laughs> All right. So you guys get ready to pull uh, away from the station. Um, it's pretty much a clear release. Get off dock clamps. Um, you take it. You're starting to move out from the station. Um, Corey, or sorry, Corey, Kel, yep. you're uh, Steven or sorry. I uh, can't remember his actual name because I keep on reading the name off of Mitchell. Name. Mitchell. Mitchell is going to begin doing the scans now, you said? Yeah, essentially just keeping an eye on long range sensors, uh, just noticing, let's see if they can notice any flight paths that are reminiscent or flight patterns that are reminiscent of Alliance patrols. Um, stuff like that because essentially the pool I was going to make was obviously mental. Um, information broker, just using whatever knowledge I learned as I was, you know, gathering intel for the brown coats. If not, then better unification war because being a former alliance. And then for the skill, no, with my specialty alliance protocols. Okay. You have an opportunity. All right, let me roll my pool real quick. Motherfucker. Both my D6s rolled ones. I'll buy them. <laughs> oh. So, so we're at four. Uh, that were rolled yeah. tonight? Yeah, so far. Because you and... Uh, actually, yeah, we all have two complications each now. Yep. Son of a... 
Well, unless your complications stack on top of ours. No, that they is don't. True. They're individuals. Wait. Uh, no, no, no. I don't know how this works. I'm going to count them as individuals. I'm going to look that up later. Um, so there are so you basically what's your total and remember ones don't count towards your total at all oh i i know my total is an 11 and i don't have anything to add to it because i used my big damn hero dice last time you don't have any more big damn hero dice no i didn't get it back gotcha all right if only so here we go oh this is gonna go well Actually, this is the situation. You are monitoring long range sensors. Yep. You are pretty much trying to monitor traffic and monitor. Well, you're monitoring for ships. Ships yeah. not broadcasting, ships that are not doing the expected. Um, and you are not picking up anything, really. I mean, you pick up like other ships that are coming and going from Niska's, the usual yeah. traffic that you normally see, but you don't pick up anything coming in from anywhere else. Oh, that could be a good and bad thing. But you're fairly confident that you're, you know, you're you're doing everything you need to do. You're all the knowledge that you have. You're applying to what's going on, and you're fairly confident that, that you guys have. Are, are in the clear. All right. So are you, guys, are you as you guys get out into the ship ship lanes proper, which is basically getting far enough away from the station to see so you can do your burn to get to turn the drives on. Um, you guys get out there into the shipping lane. You fire up the engines to full capacity. You do your initial burns to get underway, <clears throat> getting yourself up to speed. And you're pretty much on, like, you know, you've gotten this course laid out according to what uh, uh, Mariana and Clayton both got from their different intelligence sources. Clayton from his previous knowledge and Mariana from her, you know, combing, combing her friends and associates. You've got a decent course plotted. And the big thing you made exception for is any course corrections that had to be done at the last minute uh, to be able to maximize fuel capacity etc etc so you guys are fairly certain that you have a good strong situation laid out um, you've got your other course correction burns laid in the next one's not for two freaking days because remember this was a two week trip yeah so the next one's not for two freaking days um, but everything uh, is goes very very smoothly for those two days um I'm, I'm assuming that you can't be at the sensors the entire time kill but you can set them to automatically read yeah so you basically just leave the sensors running and you have it set up to ping if anything comes up um clayton what are you doing in the downtime the same things clayton clayton's been doing uh, he does have a lot. He like we have all of the uh, like non perishables from the farm. Mm -hmm. We also have all this new protein. Yep. I'm, I'm cooking, chilling, media, playing music. I'm I'm very much just as always keeping busy. I don't know how to not. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I imagine the protein stuff as like spam. Uh, it's it's pretty close. It's like if you're calling that uh, first episode, it's almost like a ch like a giant chocolate bar almost. Yeah, well, it's it's basically a protein powder that can be added. Liquid can be added to it to make it into something cool. else. It can yeah. be like turned into a loaf like spam. <clears throat> it can be turned into a stock for cooking. You you want to know oh. what I imagine the protein to be like disgusting? <laughs> no 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 no. Well, I mean. <clears throat> But 100%, like, you guys remember the original Power Bars? Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Like, that's uh, that's yeah. what I imagine the protein is like. Like, it's not really meat. It's just, like, protein that's, like, oozed out of an extruder into, like, a bar <laughs> format. <laughs> oh, we definitely stole your entire spice rack, though, so I've got shit to work with. <laughs> 
I don't know if you can put spice on a power bar and make it anything other than a power Unbeknownst bar. Unbeknownst to everyone else, Clayton's former life before joining the military was making do with jack shit. So this is one thing that he that he's another one of those things that he just he's good. He's fine. I was gonna say it pretty much was uh Nate's life too. So anytime yeah. you need help, she's like right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah. She knows she knows how to make something stretch forever. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, I can already say that when it comes to the cooking, uh, every time I go to eat, you can just see just like <laughs> hesitation because <laughs> yeah, there's some the military rations. Well, not <laughs> even that. Not only the fact that military rations. Remember, he was from the Mitchell's from the core world. Mm -hmm. He's just having the good shit, like the real stuff. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I've but you didn't, say, Jonathan. You were in um, the service for a while. Clayton True, but definitely. still. Clayton definitely brought on some real meat to give you some real meat on a stick because uh, it was offered. Uh, it was a thing we found on oh, on the station, so he true. definitely brought you some. <coughs> yeah, he, he most definitely brought some for you and the and the uh, VIP. Commander. Yeah, I I'm probably gonna smell it first to see if I can identify what kind of meat it is before I stick it in my mouth. Okay, what did we determine it was rat? Rat, it was yeah, rat. rat. Yeah. <laughs> it was basically rat. fresh station rat. Yep. Okay, so, and all I can think of now, and I forgot when we found that out, uh, Demolition Man. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> as I will say, as someone who has had rat before, it's not bad, guys. It's an actual I've had squirrel, and that's just tree rat. So. It's, it's, it's uh, also very similar textures and flavors. Yeah. And they're fucking hard to debone. They are. Uh, so, um, you, but you guys are basically um, cruising along for the first two days. Nothing unusual happens. Nothing comes up on sensors. And all the traffic that you guys predicted happens just as you expected. Uh, on the after the first two days, you make your first course correction. Um, basically making sure you're staying off radar, making sure you're staying out of lanes that you know are heavily patrolled. Dropping um, down to, to yeah. minimal power when absolutely necessary. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> now this, this next. Excuse me, one second. Yeah. Don't die. Can't die on stream, man. Doesn't yeah. work like that. We 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 can't turn the stream off. If the you're only, having the only stream, room. my dead body sitting in a chair. No, the only the only ones allowed to die on stream are Mariana's loved ones. Oh, and I'm, the, I'm the only one who has got a jab. All the pot head. shots at me tonight, damn guys. That's not true. The pot shots are the people you love. Oh, fuck. <sighs> well, I mean, I'm sorry. Loved, they're no longer alive. <laughs> oh. Okay. You know me, love you, Lissa. <laughs> now, where's this big butt, Ray? Where's I, I think we need a butt? counter for how many times you guys make Mariana the butt of the joke for dead family. <laughs> well, dead so, loved ones because Sparkles for the family the is a trip. pet. Did, didn't you write your backstory? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> the next portion of the trip is the longest portion. It's also the one where you are going to take one big risk. You're going to try and get your acceleration up, which means doing an extended burn, which does make you visible for a longer period of time. Um, it's a trick that everyone does when they're trying to make up time, <clears throat> but it's something that smugglers rarely do um, because it basically creates a giant trail in space. From when you do it oh, okay um, so so then launching the crybaby about 30 minutes or so before we're going to do that's probably one of the better times to launch it because if we were ever going to get caught that's probably the window to get caught in and i'd like the crybaby to be a little bit far away by the time we could possibly start getting caught so even if we get caught at the moment we first do it they still have to leave to go help and if we get caught an hour or two into it it's still within range they would have to go help okay so basically you're going to go ahead and set the crybaby in motion about half an hour before you actually go do the burn 
Yeah, because I, I need it to be far <clears> enough <throat> away that they actually would have to like cut, tail, and run. You know? Got it. And are you still going to do the transmitted signal to start the crybaby, or are you just going to set a timer? No, I'm still going to do transmitted signal. Okay. So you put the crybaby out, set it on its course. 30 minutes later, are you triggering the crybaby the moment you start your burn or before you start your burn? No, I'm, I'm only going to trigger the crybaby if we need to get away from the alliance like gotcha. something pops on the radar gotcha 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 <clears throat> so you make the course corrections you prepare for your hard burn um you know nath rolls the engines up gives you the all clear uh for atlas atlas you know goes for full burn the ship ex accelerates and you guys basically are you know, doing that whole period where you're kind of pinned to your seats. As the sh ship builds up a large bit of momentum. Um, right as you're cutting the engines, making sure that you're staying completely on court, doing, doing all the corrections you need to do right after you do a major burn, which is making sure you stayed on course, making sure that everything's tracking, uh, making sure that there's nothing odd about the ship situation, vibration, etc., etc. So everyone's doing their their due diligence on everything. Right as you guys are, you know, getting through tying everything down, everything like that, <clears throat> you actually get an active ping, Cal. Yeah. Um, that there is a ship where it should not be. I, am I able to discern what ship, like type of ship it is based on transponder <clears throat> signal? No. You have a pick ping that there is a mass in your path that you will be encountering within the next like five minutes. All right. Um, you have two choices. You can course correct again, or, well, <laughs> you have one choice. You can change course. You do not have enough time to decelerate. All right. Is anyone up near the console with me, or is everyone I'm down? I'm assuming since the burn is just happening, that uh, Atlas and Mariana are up on the flight deck. Um, right. I'll let you and Clayton decide where you are. All right. Well, I was well, I was assuming that the uh, the center station is probably up on the flight deck. Yes. Or, or rather, so I would definitely well, be up there. It, probably you had it set to just ping you to let you know. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like I, mean, I was it's ping, back. It's at going off on the station itself. The sensor ray is going yeah. off. Yeah, but so, I'm I mean, getting a direct. Either Atlas or Mariana could that. see it, but it's also pinging you. Yeah. So. I would say that during the downtime, outside of, you know, when we had meals, stuff like that, I'm probably st still just kind of like, I guess, making my room my room with what little we have. Gotcha. Uh, but as soon as I start hearing, you know, again, the ping, I bolt up to the deck to actually read it. I let Mariana and uh, Atlas know, like, hey, we got something dead ahead. You know, we got what looks like a ship dead ahead of us. Pull up the sensors and try to see what he's talking about. Um, You do see... On the long range sensors coming up quickly down to like four minutes before contact there is a decent sized mass of metal um up ahead of you um it's not directly in path but it's going to be close enough that if they if they start a burn they can catch you i say a bit with it oh. being just a few minutes ahead can we see it from the flight deck or it's still too far out no too far out okay so double check it the, the based on the distance and the mass of metal we're talking about, are we talking about something that's like the size of a starfighter, a ship like us? It's either a, an it, it, it's, it's it's something along the size of a cargo hauler or bigger. But when you say or bigger, like things can get up to the size of like a whole like almost alliance city floating in space. I mean, yeah, it's so... not a citadel. It's not a citadel that would ping way so, before this. It, so basically, like cargo ship or extra big cargo ship. Cargo ship, big cargo ship. Uh, Crew ship. Uh, 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 alliance, um, larger alliance patrol vessel. Um, 
troop carrier. Yeah. So we're talking liner. like anywhere. Yeah, we're talking anywhere from like a box truck to an eighteen wheeler, essentially <clears throat> in starships. Oh, no, no, he, he just said a liner. He basically went from like, um, from like uh, our size all the way up to something that's like a little bigger than a than a like a luxury yacht, but smaller than a cruise ship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because we're not talking about like like cruise ship level, but we are talking like probably carrying around maybe if you it, the bigger scale like fifty people in a cruise type of capacity. I'm guessing is about as big yes, as we're getting. Yes, and remember these aren't cruise cruises. This is like just no, I know. transporting people from point A to point B. No, I, I know, but I mean like I meant like the scale of a ship. What you'd expect a ship to need to be <clears throat> to take fifty people in a cruise type effect. Yes. Yeah. So it could be small or it could be kind of big. Um. Down to three minutes. I mean, we can ping the crybaby now, and if it if it's actually something that cares, it might go after that. Or we could, or we can do nothing and run the risk of seeing what happens, and then try to ping something if it really looks like it might be a sticky situation, or maybe it literally is just a big chunk of metal floating in space. Right, right. Trajectory wise, is it moving, or are we just approaching it, it with moving. it? Okay, so how fast? Like uh, about half your speed, but the course is—it's not parallel, but it's close enough to where you think they might be going in the similar direction you are. Are they headed away from us? Like we're going to pass them, or yes. are they headed towards us? They're headed away from you, but you're catching up to them fast because of your boosted acceleration. I think we course correct, and if we have to set off the crybaby, we should set off the crybaby. Because I'd yeah. rather not waste it. Yeah, I'll say, like, have hand on the trigger, just don't pull yet. Yeah. How much do you want to course correct? <clears throat> Two minutes. A, a decent enough distance that we can kind of get away from them but look captain i'm i'm just the pilot i'm not the one making the calls you got to tell me exactly how far you want to course correct so i can make it happen lisa doesn't know space <laughs> distance <laughs> necessary so i can literally just say I'm, I'm, that you give him you give him instructions to get you as far enough away without and do it and fly casual yep <laughs> yeah fly casual <laughs> give wide give them a wide enough berth essentially and mm -hmm. in, in, in fairness, basically what he's saying to you is like, oh, hell no. I'm not the one getting yelled at later for making the wrong call. Like, you tell me exactly where to fly this ship. Get us far enough away that we can try to not be to actually run. seen and be prepared to run, but uh, fly casual. Ray, is that specific enough to know what she wants? Sure is. Okay. As long as it's specific, specific enough to know exactly what she wants, I can do it. Yep. And this is not a roll situation because all you're doing is changing course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing to crash into. You're in the void of space. Uh, we're in so, the black. <clears throat> you begin adjusting course, basically getting yourself on an aligned course to pretty much be moving a more away from them and creating a wider gap between the two ships. Um, as you do so, you streak by where you, you know, where you would have come to the apex point where you were going to be closest to them. Um, as you do that, you instantly pick up on the sensors, hard burn, cor course correction, hard burn, and they are literally on your tail. All right. Can we tell what it is now? So the only other thing you could, uh, oh and they're completely within sensor range where you should be picking up the transponder but we're not right. silence but, oh cat oh. i i can hard burn and try to outrun them if that's what you want to do but they're chasing and they're flying silent uh let's try our best to outrun them be ready for getting boarded all right i need somebody to get some sensor detail while i'm making that run I'm hard, I was already on the outlet system. hard burn. Are right. we on? Are we doing this on com, or is this an open com thing as well? 
Yeah. And they all the same room. Yeah. Okay. I hear get ready, prepare to be boarded, and you hear I I I uh, immediately uh, run to where all of the firearms are carried and start laying yeah. shit out. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say, and I'm already on the sensor relay, so since so I ran back up to the flight deck. Cap, may I this recommend a us. degrading? May I recommend a degrading calm signal that can't go more than like half a kilometer out, but uh, send out a a plea for for alliance help. Uh, <clears throat> make it look like we're on the up and up. All right, uh, Cal. Yes, give me your sensor roll. All right. Uh, let's see. So obviously, still in mental. Uh, I guess we'll stick with information broker for the distinction, just because again, just learning. I guess I'm just learning from it. Essentially, trying to figure out if I can pinpoint what it is, all that. Uh, but we're going to use my operate this time because I doubt this is an alliance vessel. So yeah, no, it's not going to help me. Hopefully, the D six doesn't say. You know, hold on, my D six doesn't give me the middle finger again. Uh, okay, so. Oh, and the TN is going yes. to be a 13. 13? Okay. Again? Oh, yeah, it's two 13s in a row. But this time I didn't give him an opportunity. Uh, so it didn't roll once, thankfully. Cool. Hold on. You said it was a 13 was your TN? Yes. Okay, because regardless whether I buy the third dice or not, I'm still not going to beat it. But you're not beating me by five, though, because if I don't spend the points, I'm only going to be at nine. So that's only four points. So it's up to you. Um, Just going to leave it at the nine? Uh, can anyone help this boy? Yeah, can I? Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I have nothing of benefit here. Nothing. Some of us are flying a ship. <laughs> My dice uh, freaking hate me today. One sec. Oh no, I'm I'm Dorian. That's why I'm not saying anything besides the fact my dice hate me. That's truth at this point. Out of stock. Because uh, there's lend a hand has been redeemed. Okay, that's a. That is, yeah, that just adds one to my current roll, right? I'm checking it right now. And that what we yes, said that's that a plus one. Okay, so that means if I do buy my third dice, that puts me at 13, so I match it. Which doesn't that's, beat it, but... Yeah. If anyone is able to help, help me out here... Uh... Wow. So you're going to, have to buy their oh. dice even if they help you. I know. Yeah. I got I got eight plot points. I can spend them. All right. How, how do I help? Just tell oh. me what skill you're using and what the dice is. And then if he gets any complications, you suffer them too. Yeah, there is that. But but in fairness, going the forward, like you're really the complications to, at this point. You're you're really yeah. supposed to declare these things in advance because you're kind of getting away from having complications if you know like the only complication you could roll is your dice. So Wait, what... do you have any big damn hero dice? Nope. Nope. He's out. Used them last. You lo used them last game. Didn't earn them back. <clears throat> mm. He hasn't rolled as often as the rest of us. <laughs> and whenever I do roll, he... I don't do well. He also hasn't had much of a need to. And whenever yeah. I do, I don't roll well. Apparently. <laughs> have you anyone tried able to help it... your dice? <laughs> Anyone able I, to do you have a dice jail? I, say, I don't know of a skill that I could use to benefit you. Well, I'm trying I'll... to think. I was trying to think of one myself. And what I... exactly are you trying to accomplish here, Kel? I'm on a sensor relay trying to figure out the best way we can outrun this. Um, That would be what skill? Because I'm personally using would... Opera as a skill, but I mean... I've, I've got a D6 skill. and operate. You can your fly you skill can help. Or the my, or your D6, yeah. My my fly skill could help? If that's the case, it's a D8. Wait, could operate help? If you... That... I would say the fly skill would be more appropriate. Okay. 
then uh that's what operates a tip because <laughs> i misunderstood what operate was you can change that by the way oh can i yeah can I drop that down and bump something else up yes yeah. all right so you are giving me a fly yeah yeah it's all a right. d8 Okay, did, you, cool. did you think this was D and D, and there's like five skills for the same thing? <laughs> well, my okay. thought was operate from a medical standpoint and treat from a medical standpoint are two very different yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and operating on someone are very different things. Yeah, what's your total count? All right. So it's going to be a I just literally did the math. Line, a sixteen. Okay. Because I'm spending two plot points to buy the dice Lissa gave me plus my third dice. Got it. All right. So we beat, yay. Yeah. So, all right. So basically what you get from this is that what you said, you were basically trying to track and see um, what you could do to try and get away from them. Yeah. Like the best, like the best, like way we can, without going, I guess, I'm trying to make sure we don't use up too much fuel trying to get away from these guys. Like the the most optimal path to evade them. Okay, so you're scanning pretty much every single direction, trying to find out if you you can put anything between you and them, slingshot yep. around any rogue moons, anything you can do to get away from this. Yep. Um, the one thing you pick up more than anything else, it's the most blaring thing you get, is oh, no. just from scanning their ship. They are running dirty as fuck. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you tell us this? Do you say this immediately? Yeah, well, see, I don't think Mitchell would know that. There be is re lethal re amounts of radiation coming off that ship. Yeah, I know Mitchell may not know his reruns, but I'm definitely mentioning that they're running dirty. Going like. Mariana hasn't encountered that's Reavers that's before, so. I've um, definitely heard of them for sure. Yeah, like. Mitchell's yeah. heard stories being from the core world, but as far as Mitchell's concerned, they're essentially just boogeymen. And right then, there is an incredible uh, the, the 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 nav station just oh no. fucking blares alerts everywhere. The radiation, uh, the radiation meters that are usually red registering on your engine, blare off the charts with gamma rays as a gamma beam. <laughs> Is fired by the ship and barely misses. Oh, oh God. shit! Um, is there a way that we can hide and go silent? Oh, oh, ooh! With a crime ooh. maybe help now because ooh. they find a weaker target. Ooh. No, 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 no! But it so came up earlier. What? what? I'm I'm literally gonna be like Mariana. Do the hard burn. Like, I'm just going to send pilot controls to her station. Ray? Yeah? Oh, no. I'm going to pinpoint their ship. It's oh, very no. easy to do so. Very easy to do. I am going to uh, send NAVCOM random-ass burst transmissions directly into their NAVCOM. And I'm going to overwhelm it with like crazy data that will prevent them from being able to do any trajectory and should shut down their ship's ability to fly just like that crew had to dig all that shit out of there that last time. You literally told me that not even like 45 minutes ago. Congratulations. I'm unpacking and like blasting them to hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all see right. how good they are at digging code out of a computer. See guys, I plan ahead sometimes. Is this our complication, Ray? Yep. Yeah, but I say for sure, for sure, well, this is uh, our complication. Was, was this, this complication, complication from my role or Jonathan's role? Or my role? Yes. This could yeah. be. This is a. No. This is a stack of complications from everyone's roles. What? What? Oh, knock on what, wood. Wait, wait, what? What ranking of complication? I've never had a complication. Uh -huh. Before wait 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 before you roll, what rating I'm of complications? Using three separate complications, two of them are Jesus. a D10 and one's a D8. Well, but are they are so they're all different complications? They're all complications. They're all the same complication from different people. So are they a complication or three separate complications? Three separate complications. Okay. So it's a D10 and two two D10s and a D8. 
new. It is what? a D10, a D10, a D8, uh, a D8, and a D6. But the That's complications odd. are two D10s and a D8, correct? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you for reminding me. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I missed one D8. So it is wait, a D10, a D10, a D8, a D8, a D8, and a D6. Because the original wait. dice pool is a D8, a D8, and a D6. I just want to talk about the complications. What are the complications? A D10, a D10, and a D8. Okay, that's what I said like three times. You keep saying yes and then no, so then I get really confused. Oh, I thought you were I thought you were thinking I was only making the dice pull out of complications. No, no, no. I just need to know like I'm specifically before you roll, I'm asking about the complications. Got, 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 got it. Yeah, D10, a D10, and a D8. I cannot cool. wait to see gotta, Adam's face about it. this. Wait, 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 wait. Before you roll, Ray. Those two D10 complications. Okay. I'm dropping two plot points. They are now assets. And what are you using to do that? I'm using my talent, Milk Run. I uh, I am using what they thought was advantageous to them and turning it against them. They thought they had us in a good spot, so they're like aiming for us directly, which puts their navcom in a great place for me to just blast the hell out of it from our ship. And they didn't see it coming because this is not the way they think. I do have a question. Sure. Are any of these complications from me directly, caused by something I did directly? Like only, any of only my... the fact that you helped Jonathan's character, which threw you into his complications, which gave you the two. Okay, so then my question is, would that apply to my on the run guilty by association gain one plot point each time your actions cause a fellow crew member to become targeted? No, because by... it was Jonathan's action. Damn it. Yeah, you just held the so, action. So I was what's say, your man, action I'm directly? I was like, am I about to get four plot points? <laughs> that would be no. nice. Uh, real quick, Jonathan, well, <laughs> that that distinction that lets you do that? Yeah. It just lets you remove the complication completely, no matter what dice level it is? Uh, no, I specifically turn it into an asset. I turn it against them. It's like a counterpoint. So you get, counter basically spell. you get two 1d10 assets. Well, you you have you had three different dice, so yeah, I'm I'm at triggering it twice to turn two of them into assets at this point. I'm assuming you're taking the two highest. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. I, I'm just trying to strip your dice pool and oh, buff mine. I got you. All the I got time. you. And I'll blow two. And shit. All right. I can't do anything else with it though. Fifteen. Okay. Um. Oh. This is almost like, also. This is almost also like playing a you know, a adversarial board game with people. With yeah, a I was dice gonna say it feels a lot like MTG with uh. Yeah, counter spells. <laughs> how we're and counting like the. <laughs> it's how Are... we're counting the dar dice pool with the target numbers. Yeah feels a lot like, all right, I've got trample. <laughs> uh, you know what? What's I'm going to go and use my big damn hero dice. Oh. You didn't want to stick it a 19? Nah, I feel like it'd be, oh, uh, that was not even as good as I wanted it to be. Uh, it got you high enough, though. Yeah, it did, but I mean. I know. So, you, But what I'm saying is, oh, yeah, you don't get that one back, though. You get my highest. And you strip yeah. me of my D10, so you now got a D8. That's fine. It's still useful. All right. So uh, you raise uh, the stakes. Uh, what? You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and spend the last plot point I have, and I'm going to go ahead and keep the four. So you got a five and the 19, which is a 24, plus the four is a 28. I got a 15, which needs, means you needed to get a 25, which you got. So now you've basically raise the stakes twice um so you still get the d8 yeah um but you get to basically dictate the scene of what happens <laughs> the only thing i will oh, so say is you are you cannot destroy their ship this way but you can definitely cripple it <laughs> you broke up jonathan oh i said that, that wouldn't even make sense i so so mariana grabs the terminal and starts taking care of piloting 
and I just like start furiously like typing away as fast as I can and uh, broadcasting that burst. And then the next thing you know, like the ship just stops the hard burn from behind us. And it's like nothing's happening on the ship. Uh, maybe everything's locked out. Maybe they're just trying to fix stuff. Maybe just navigation's down. Who knows? But they're not doing much of anything at the moment. Um, and we're just sailing off with them just coasting at their last course. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't want to like over narrate. I, I don't no. feel like I. It's that's your like scene, what I, brother. But I feel like that's what's going to happen. I mean, and then I'm just going to like look at everybody else. They're dead in the water for probably at least 30 minutes, if not longer. Highly recommend we change course a little bit and get the hell out of here as fast as we can. Well, we just changed course. Technically, we could change back to our original course and keep going the exact direction we were going. We just can't do a hard burn. Remember, you never decelerated, so you're still moving at the same rate. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, if we just adjust our direction back to where we were going, they probably shouldn't be able to track us at that point, right? Because we're not doing a hard burn any longer. We're just kind of coasting off of that speed, right? You're going to have to do... At, this, at the rate you're accelerating and the speed you're going at, you're going to have to do a bit of a hard burn. Because remember, you're not just countering your forward momentum when you turn. The ship turns, yeah. and then you have to counter forward momentum and counter it with the angle that you want to take next. So yep. because of the velocity you're traveling at, you yeah. do have to throw out a bit more energy than normal. That's the but problem with moving at this speed for course corrections. If we're going to be doing something, we need to do it now while all the systems they've got are probably still down. I mean, I, I don't know how good of a programmer they've got over there, but what I threw into their system, it's going to take them some time to dig out. Yeah, if I mean, they know what they're looking for and if they know how they got shut down. And if they don't, it'll take them even longer to figure out how to get everything back online. If that was ship is what I was thinking, if that ship is what I think it was, I, I doubt they have anyone on that ship currently in a state of mind to fix their computers. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was radiation, what they just did. That was some fucking reavers. Uh, I yeah. say as I uh, am now, like, just got into into the bridge and have, like, every gun from the entire armory <laughs> on me, like, ready to hand them out. You're, like, clanking. Your, uh, oh, I, I have been running up. I, I don't know if anybody can tell me what the correct Firefly response is, but as soon as you say those are reavers, my character's basically like, okay, boomer. Okay, boomer. Well, hold on. No, Mariana I, is like on. this. Like this. as soon as the mention of the the running you dirty fuck. was brought up, Mariana knew exactly what these fucking were. Yeah. She's seen them before. It's terrifying, and she's already in a bad state of mind, and she is visibly shaking right oh, now. I'm as I she's set, like, I set one firearm down in front of you and hand you a cigarette. <laughs> Just <laughs> light it and pick it back up. Do I, do I need these or not? Well, where is it? If that's a ship full of reavers, they're not fixing their shit. It's not going to happen. They're, they're yeah, brain they're fried. Not... They're just here to kill and eat. That's it. I, I think let's keep them out for. Uh... I, I instead of setting down all of them, I just put one for each person. Kind of, I put a rifle for each person, and I go back. I, you see me kind of like slump a little bit, walking down the stairs. Just uh, so, Jonathan, you're sitting there at the helm, getting ready to make the course correction. Kel, are you still at the uh, comms? On the comms with the sensors? Yeah, because what I was going to say is I want to make sure I found the phrase. Because one upon here in Reavers immediately is going to say Goram. Just like, oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Um, but then two, in man, I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I know I'm going to butcher it, but in man, you're pretty saying mugless goat of all mugless goats. Like, just going like, what the fuck? Because, yeah. I said, as far as middle term, like, all he, I knew there was like, wait, those are real? I thought that was a joke. Yeah, they, like they, a bad story. No, they surely are real. Uh, very much. I, I've so. seen I've seen their ships blown to hell and back, and uh, seen a couple of them before. Yeah. It's not pretty. 
And upon hearing that, even though I've seen, you know, Mitchell's definitely seen a lot of war, I, you know, that whole bit, I just go, like, pale in the face on that part. Um, but then after that, just kind of, like, you know, shake myself back together and get on the sensor. I would say at this point, it's just making, especially because how long have we been flying since we lost what I'm assuming? Like, this is just after, right? It's been, like, f- maybe five minutes. Yeah. Maybe. So I would say my main thing would be like giving enough time, like just checking the sensors to make sure they haven't gone on our tail again. Okay. Like that we so actually have lost them. You fire up the sensors. You, I'm sorry, you reverse the sensors. You start doing the more long range readings behind you. Um, Jonathan, you're, you make the, you're setting the course correction and making the burn. So let's go ahead okay. and do these separate rolls real fast. For Jonathan. Oh, oh shit. Am I making Mario, a pilot roll? Yes. Mariana will assist. Oops. So if you're assisting, you just got to figure out what dice you're using that's not a fly skill, because it can't be the same one that I'm using. It can't be the same one. Okay. Correct. Uh, And am I flying against them at the moment? No, you're just trying to make the most efficient course correction you can without burning a fuck ton of fuel. Your difficulty okay. is a 16. I'm getting low on fucking dice. Of points. Yeed. <laughs> and then for Kel. Would it be no or would it be survive? What's your no? Eight. No, I mean, you can't get a specialization on eight or can you get a ten? Six. No, no, no. Specialization. No. Oh. When you get first, oh, she's got a... you can get the specialization. Yeah, she is at eight. So your no is supposed to be assigned to something, like no blah. It's no trade guild, but. Yeah, I wouldn't if, help with that. If your yeah, no is high so... enough, you get a specialization for free. If it's not, you just have a no skill with no specializations, which means that you use the skill, but you never get to roll the d6. Yeah. But I say the assignment is just to add the d6, correct? Yeah. Yeah, all, yeah, all the, all, yeah, because you know all those points we got during character creation for like yeah. uh, distinctures. For each skill that was a d6 or higher, we could we could have spent a point to add a specialty to it like for example uh i did you know fight close quarters because i had that above a d6 that's what the, that whole there specialties aren't don't think you can use a specialty dice on helping though i think it's just your generalized skill yeah this is the only generalized skill not specialties what i was asking for is she had what her no special what her no was in ah. yeah my my no special every no every you can get multiple skill. no skills but they all have to pertain to something you, you have one no skill. You can have multiple specializations, which will always add D6s to it. Got it. Okay. So, Kel, your TN is an 11. All right. Well, same thing. So, going mental, operate, and um, information broker. Yes. Well, what were you helping Wait, with? Does Jonathan get to. Well, did you have something you can give to Jonathan then? Uh either perform or survive. I'll let you give survive. Okay, so it's a D6. And Kel, what's your total? Uh, my total is because... What did you say the TN was again? 11. 11, okay, so... I, said, I got 13 just with my dice, and I won't be able to beat it by 5 anyway, so... I'll how many, sleep, how many dice was in your pool? Just 3. Do you spend an extra for the 3rd? The second, the no, no, I had no. Well, no, because my mental's a ten, so I mm-hmm. rolled a nine there, uh-huh. and then I had a four on my D eight, hence thirteen. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So you equaled, which doesn't beat. Oh, sorry, it's you 11. said it was eleven. It's eleven. My bad, my bad. Yeah. So yeah, no problem. Johnson, <laughs> what did you get? Jesus, twenty four. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like hell. Damn. Damn. But look at how I got a twenty four. Because that's the funny part. That's all I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, you maxed what out the? three dice. <laughs> and then you roll two twos. Boy. He maxed out a D12. He maxed out a D8. And he maxed out his D4. 
Yeah. <laughs> Bye. That's the, that's the tricky one. That's, <laughs> that's the tricky one. That's the one that screwed me every single time I've been dumb enough to try and get myself a plot point that way. I've gotten a one every single time I run a D, roll a D4. Because um, I can do the same thing. I can burn a D4 instead of another no, dice. Um, all right. So, yeah, you got a 24 and I got a 16. So, yeah, you, you are going to be able to do whatever course correction you want. Um, at the same time, Jonathan is engaging and firing at the course correction. Uh, Kel, your your uh, Mitchell is, is on the sensors, and the first thing you notice is that the ship has gone from being just sitting there to having course corrected itself and hard burned again, and as hard as it's hard burning. The people inside that ship are experiencing close to eight G's. Ooh. 10 G's is, is lethal. Is it hard burning after us correctly? Yes. Fuck. Hold on. Yeah, it, you said how many G's is lethal? 10. 10. 10 to 14, depending on the person. If we decelerate and just get out of their way, I don't think they have the physical capability to correct themselves at this speed. I'm Sakori is saying this. You understand that to decelerate, you, to you turn the ship completely around and fire the engines in the opposite direction. Yeah. Which uh, was going to subject you guys to a shit ton of G's. Yeah. yeah. These, these ships don't have inertial dampeners. Yeah. yeah. Like no ship in Firefly does. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Yep. You will splatter yourself against your inside of your own hull. Well, Corey, and Mike, we're all in chairs. We're probably strapped down at this point. You'll By the way, yourself we'll... in your chairs. Yeah. Yeah. And both meanings are splattered, probably. Yeah. Actually, How a friend of mine was in an experimental program where he would literally test G do G G force test stress stress tests for the Air Force, and he mm -hmm. once took sixteen Gs. Good God! The... On purpose. You're in turtles. Yes. Yeah. It would be so yeah. terrible after yeah. that. Yep. Um, he was, he was, he had his entire back was one giant bruise, the back of his calves. Sounds about right. Uh, yeah. So I guess my next question is at that speed, their ability to course correct is probably pretty minimal, right? Yeah. They're going yes, to catch up with depending them. on how much they're willing to risk. Which, because remember, the G stress on the ship is just as bad as it is on the body. Yeah. So yeah. my thought is we can do a we can do a hot burn. We can get going again and prop they'll be on our tail. The other option is to change our and again, Corey, not Clayton. Throwing this out there from the game standpoint. We're flying through space, which goes all directions. <laughs> If they're going this, if they're going towards us in a linear direction right now, following us directly, going at this ridiculous speed, and we are going nominally slower, they're going to catch up. But that does mean at a certain point, if we are to just dip out of the same course they're going, they're going to pass us, and the only option for them to come back is to completely flip themselves around and come back which with how they're acting they would probably have exactly what i just suggested we do they would kill themselves trying to come after us again you do know they have weapons they may just be looking up looking to catch up to you enough to cripple you that's entirely fine we are going at a speed slow enough we should be able to at least be harder to hit because we're not Ooh. having to fight our own our own trajectory if we're going slow enough. That's my thought. That's that's Corey's thought on how space movement works. <laughs> we can yeah, we can bomb and leave. You hit the we're going you slower. hit the accelerators, yeah. you get the ship up to speed. Normally you do it gradually. So there's like yeah. you know, you, you increase the G's by 1.5, 2 G's max. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is combat maneuvers, which is where you know you have people in G suits and mm -hmm. in G chairs 
and they're combating it with training where they do breathing exercises and shit to be able to handle the g-forces um the biggest problem that you're having is you know if these are reavers you don't know what their physical capabilities are that's true but you know what yours are yeah and they're already and they basically did a incredibly hard burn accelerated way more than is healthy for the for a human body and they are catching up i would like um this is mitchell talking like in game i would say let's just cry baby they might hear distress they, if they get that signal saying distress call they may go for that because it's an easier target I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're pretty intent on chasing us right now. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, but they don't know about. They don't know that they're something. I don't else think they're ADHD enough to not try and continue coming after us. Well, I'm, no, I'm not saying that. It's like yeah. I'm there's like because you got to think, Reavers. You know, like as we saw in the show in the movie, this is out of character. You know, they would attack us. You know, towns. You know, mm -hmm. barely probably have anything there. They go for they. We've seen them go for easy targets before, like well, meta wise. But they're also like a wild animal in a respect. Yeah. True. And once they have a scent, they're probably going to stick to it. And they are physically stronger from an out from an out of game standpoint. They are yeah, physically yeah. stronger, if only for the fact that they're willing to push past the normal threshold of pain and such. Yeah, I was like, yeah, basically, yeah. their adrenal glands are constantly tapped. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Yeah. Right. You, said, you said the thing's traveling at about it, uh, the effect of eight G's on people right now, right? Well, yeah. it's done its burn, so it's. But yes, is, is that the most burn the ship could do, or is the ship capable of burning more? Uh, all ships are capable of burning more. Okay. Oh so, no. Follow up question. Oh, I know where you're going with this. If I, if I change their 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 ship. Board computer positioning with the same kind of idea, but instead specifically to make it seem as though they're going slower than what they're going. Is it possible there should accelerate even further to try to compensate because it hasn't thought that it's reached the right speed yet? Not where I thought you were going with that. No, it would be another burn. It right, but like, <clears throat> once the burn stops, the G forces are gone. Okay. But would that possibly increase the intensity of the burn because it's not going as, as fast as it thinks it's supposed to? Like, does it make sense? Like, if I effectively override the the speedometer on their ship so it thinks it's going 30, is it going to accelerate to try to get back up to 80? It depends on if it's manually being piloted or if it's being piloted by a computer. If it's manually being piloted and they see that it's going 30, they're probably going to try to push it back to 80. Yeah. Both options are bad for them. So, so then I'm gonna get. I'm gonna program a burst that will trick the odometer and mess up the distance calculations between our vessels to make it seem like we're getting further away. Okay. Because either that'll make them want to give up, or it'll make them want to burn faster and harder. Now, how are you gonna do that? Uh, well. Isn't everything relative positioning? So can't I, can I change it the same way I overloaded stuff? Can I just change the way? No, the way the nav signal works, <clears throat> it scrambles their nav system as in they cannot plot their own courses until they get the, find out what's causing the issue. Um, so they you can't force in a new course or anything like that you can't override their nav system and make them go where you want you can just stop them from nowhere they're knowing where they're going which apparently they've somehow fixed very quickly yeah very quickly yep. yeah within like three minutes my assumptions they had something already set up on board from something for on the ship originally kind of thing something that took care of it immediately is my assumption is is there a way to try to hack into another ship remotely? Not very efficiently. Well, that doesn't mean no. It just means not easily. True. Okay. 
So first off, you need to gain access to their systems. How are you doing that? We can try to communicate with okay, them. Okay, let, let, let me rephrase that. First off, what skills do you have that would let you try and figure out how to gain access to their systems? Wouldn't that be an operate skill? Yeah. What What if I encode the uh, like the virus I want into a transmission that they'd have to run through like the shipboard decryption software, which means they'd have to run a program on it to decrypt it? How are you going to give that virus into their network? Well, yeah, gonna, they have to open the the email for the Trojan horse to work. Have to open the communicate to try to decrypt it. Like if you I think send they're off- going to open a decryption though. You have to make sure that they they would actually open it for it to work. If that ship just what are you trying to <laughs> what, what, what I'm saying is how are you going to entice them minutes. to open it up? I'm just assuming they're going to want to know what we're transmitting. I mean, you can try that. I, actually, I'll just tell you. That's not going to work. They don't care what you're transmitting. <laughs> that's what I would that's what I'm saying. I don't think they care. Literally the only way to really get in and the things you can do to them externally is the biggest problem with doing the navsat scramble sim th- situation is it fucks up your nav at the same time. But since you already yeah. know where you're going and you do- are not doing a slow burn, you don't have to worry about it. Because you're only fucking your nav up for a second, then it's going to reestablish connection. You're fucking their nav up for a second to make sure that they kind of like get blown off course and you can m- run faster. Um, <clears throat> the next portion of it is if you're going to get access to their system, you need to be able to backdoor their system, which means number one, you need to know what type of system they're using. Number two, you need to know what type of ways that there is to backdoor it. And number three, you need to get know what their vehicle, uh, basically their vehicle ID num- is so uh, you can get access to the computer system. Have we you need their main number what of ship this is? Huh? No. Uh, this is a fucking Frankenstein. This it's looks like, like it's okay. been chopped up from a bunch of different ships and put together. Do we see anything resembling a firefly? No. Because someone. Oh, but I say because someone here. No, all the ships look the older thing. than shit. Hmm. You. The only things you really got to see when you for the few images you got is you got close enough for the visual scanners to pick it up. Um, you see that it is a several old freighters that have been cobbled together and a bunch of really fucking huge drive systems. You also see that there is at least one radiation cannon, which is probably what fired the gamma ray burst at you, and what looks to be a giant harpoon. Great. Just, hey, uh, uh let, let... Hey, Let's Atlas, clean that off by putting it through the wash. How would you metaphorically describe yourself? <laughs> you describe yourself as, a, you know, a candle in the breeze, perhaps. <laughs> a leaf in the wind? So maybe a leaf, a leaf in the wind. The wind. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <sighs> oh, sorry. It's okay. So what are, uh, we, uh, what are you guys saying? Uh, I do have a question. Sure. Okay. Uh that uh radiation cannon gamma gun is what i'm going to call it that gamma gun Mm -hmm. uh what i have have i ever had experience with something like this do i recognize what it is gamma rays are a byproduct uh a lot of times are a byproduct of nuclear reactions well i i mean the gun that he had the the weapon they just used to fire at us yes i've seen what it was i've we got missed they cannibalized their engine to make this they've cannibalized the drive system in order to make this gun and that might be why they have so many giant drives on this thing. Yeah. So could I assume how many times they could fire that? As much fuel as they have for those drives. Yeah. And you said they have how many drives? That Three. I'm Three? Three big ass drive engines. You have two on your ship. Now I'm a pretty smart man. I feel like I didn't do much radiation tech work. I, I probably don't know enough to, to try and math out how many shots they could fire given what they have. I don't think I, mean, I like... It takes, I don't think it takes like, a lot of energy to do a gamma burst. Okay? Yeah. 
usually they're a byproduct of like nuclear explosion level yeah. rate stuff. Yeah. But the big thing about this is if they do, instead of doing a concentrated burn, they rechannel the output as gamma radiation, then they put it off of a reflective uh, reflective shield, and then it fi then it's it's very primitive. They basically yeah. fire the burst into a reflective shield, and the burst shoots out the cannon and goes straight. That's all. And technically, that gamma burst is going to go until it hits something. Yeah. It never stops. Yeah. Yep. There's Somewhere some in the universe, something's going to get fried. There's there's a there, realistically there's a sun somewhere that just got more gamma radiation than <laughs> it was already getting off. I or mean, likely. realistically, yeah, uh, or a black hole that they say the gamma burst. Yeah. Uh, I uh, okay. So my thought is. <sighs> Poor Dude, little Henry Crabgrass got a uh, burnt to a crisp <laughs> without consent. Uh, 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 would it be possible for Clayton to math out how many bursts they might have? You have no idea how much fuel they have. Well, I mean, max as a fuel, worst case scenario, max, max fuel, fuel could math that out. Probably not. You're yeah. going to be, it's going to be guessing and you can probably do, you know, they got three drive engines. Maybe they have three shots. It's a lot of energy or, you know, they have three drive engines. What if they have enough onboard physical material to do, you know, three shots each? That's 12. Yeah. How the fuck am I supposed to know this? I can't really math that's anything. Funny. Yeah, that's, I, <clears throat> I was wondering if like, uh, like, well, I can't tell what the drive engines are. They're all from old ships. I have no experience with it. You know, you know who might be able to? Oz? <laughs> Ian! Nath? Nath! Ian! I need your help! God well, damn it! That's if, they, that's if we can fire? even get... That's if we can even get the engine models off scans. Well, it's oh. midnight, which is when we say, normally end. And it's yeah. a good so, place to stop. Because yeah. you, you might need Nath. Nath! <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nath, I need your help up here. Yeah. Right. I cannot wait to see Az's face when I... I'm going to mess him after. What's happening to like, what? We're what? <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm gonna go and mention. I'm just gonna put one more in a message going reverse. She's probably, hopefully, they're asleep because they were yeah. not feeling well. But we will see in this a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for having stuck with us tonight. Um, we are gonna go ahead and call it an evening for now because it is getting late and we all have things to do and lives to lead. But we were very happy you were able to join us. Um, Liss. Hi. Where can people find you on the massive, massive interwebs? Hello. You can find me as Geek Girl Lissa on all the social media places. My primary are uh, TikTok, Twitch, and uh, Twitter. And uh, you can find me on multiple actual plays. Obviously, I'm here every other Friday. Mondays, you can find me on Bros and Dragons over on Nerdworks Media here on Twitch. Tuesdays, I've got two games. I've got Wintermere Falls at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I've got From Barovia with Love at 9 p.m. <laughs> Which I have uh, to just say, I've been catching bits and pieces of that. It's fantastic if you're not watching it. It's very fucking funny. I cannot recommend it enough. I don't get to watch all of Curse full, of Strahd full. into Scooby Doo. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's God. very entertaining. I was, I, I, I don't love the Curse of Strahd module. I want to play it. It's not my favorite, but this has been what, what little I've caught has been entertaining as hell. Gotta <laughs> put you. Yeah. Somehow the barbarian is not the angriest person in the group. Yet. At all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Her lowest stat is a 15. This bitch is having an existential crisis the entire time. <laughs> oh, nice. That's why she rages. Wait, gotcha. what barbarian are they? Path of the Storm Herald. Oh, nice. that's a good call. High stats. Yeah. It's, with uh, and she's Tundra. So. Oh, 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 oh. High stats with that is great. That's great. <laughs> oh, we are temporary hit point squad. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Because yeah. Tundra gives temporary hit points. Then we've got a Twilight Domain cleric, and then uh, crap, I can't remember what uh, Lily is, but like we have three people that give temporary hit points. 
I we went speak. against vampires and had no problems. <laughs> I can speak to nothing except that every time that I pop in for a couple of minutes or come across someone on TikTok live playing it, uh, I, I laugh a lot. That's as much as I can tell you is that it's very funny. It's very enjoyable. Uh, are you doing it sorry. on Twitch or are you doing it on TikTok? It's uh, on Twitch. Uh, Twitch it's on uh, Tannis Junior 93's uh, yeah. Twitch one channel. Or, one or two of their players run out. They go live on TikTok while they're playing. Got I it. know Cap goes live on TikTok while we're playing. Yeah, yeah Cap does. Yep. Um, Cap's a mutual, so yeah, I, I see him whenever he's on there. Gotcha. Yep. And then Wednesdays, you can find me over on Beggar Street for uh, Mask the New Generation, Superhero High. Um, and then other also, days, you can enough. find me. <laughs> huh? I said also cannot recommend enough. <laughs> Very good. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Look, Big look. Thing. My cursed shark moment was great. <laughs> hey, uh, honestly, I liked the uh, the raven stealing the bat. That brought me <laughs> a lot of joy. Big fan of that moment. Mina has also been living their best cat life. <laughs> cursed shark? It's I, a rolled, lot a mix, I in... rolled a mixed success. And uh, so I got to do the thing but it had to have some kind of imperfection so instead of shark fins it was human hands <laughs> good <Yep>. god <laughs> oh god that's gonna be my nightmares now <laughs> thank you very much. instead of the fins on the back it was the feet <laughs> oh god i'm so sorry to derail this we're trying to do out that's okay, okay. I, Jonathan... I just very much enjoy what i've seen <laughs> Thank you so much for playing tonight. Jonathan is one of our old school daggers. He has been with us since 2018 when we started out as a podcast. Um, we thank you very much, Jonathan. I really appreciate you being here. Um, and we will see you uh, next time uh, when you can make it again. Uh, because Jonathan is going, to, his schedule on Fridays is getting really, really tight. Um, pretty much it's for the best reason ever. He got an amazing, wonderful job that is pretty much a dream job in his field, and now he's paying the price of, of his success. <laughs> but it is a, the best reason ever to have to miss games, Jonathan. Uh, there's a lot of worse reasons to have to miss a game. <laughs> Absolutely. At Kel, where can people find you on the interwebs? So you guys can find me at Celtic Wyver King, uh, though... And Ray, I can't forget to tell you this. Um, the link tree changed now. Celtic's done with a K. So that was on me. I forgot to tell you that's purely on me. Yeah, because it Therefore, is Celtic. I'm not fixing it. <laughs> I'll tell you that for next time. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Kel, right, but uh, that. Mm, mm, yeah, I but obviously it. you can I find me it. here every other Friday for Crossing the Veil here on Dinner and a Game. On Mondays, uh, until you know they find a reason to kill off my NPC character. I'm guest starring still on Gods of Alea over on ADH Adventures. We just had a season finale this previous Monday where uh, some some hard moments occurred. Let's just let's just say uh part to know what they're gonna do next because we also, as far as we all know, died. <laughs> as far as we know. Uh, but that will pick up in three weeks because this Monday is the Chaos Chaotica, which is like a one-shot set in Orlea. The week after is kind of like a fireside chat with the cast, you know, ask questions. And then the new season will start up the Monday after that. Gotcha, gotcha. And I did fix it, Cal. All right, I was like, you don't have to fix it now. I'll just let you know for the future. I, 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 I am an airhead. I will fix it when I get right now so I don't forget it. <laughs> that is fair. That's valid. <laughs> and finally, uh, Corey... Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok as the hipster GM. That is T H E underscore hipster underscore GM. Uh, not super active on Twitter and Instagram. Trying to be. I'm working on some stuff, and I'll start posting more there. Uh, but TikTok, I am trying to post a little bit more too. Kind of had a little couple off weeks here trying to get some stuff laid out and do some stuff in my real life so yeah you can find me there i'm excellent, far more excellent. entertaining whenever i can script my shit out 
<laughs> I don't think so, but you know, yo, I don't think it's oh, more. I think it's ow. just as. Ow. as Ooh, that as. was that was too quick, Ray. That hurt me. No, uh, <laughs> it's you'll as. be fine. The improv is not where I is not where I thrive. I, I'm a script writer. That's what I do. So when I can lay out my shit first, I find myself much more entertaining. Got it. Uh, and if you want to hear about D and D and Critical Role, or well, tabletop RPGs in general now. Uh, you can find me talking about that bullshit on TikTok. Gotcha. And M hit us one last time because Liz hit her. Yep. The war continues. Uh. Um, so <laughs> Look, I had to hit them one more time before we read it. <laughs> yeah, they're actually getting ready to drop too, so we're not going to read them because they're going to follow off too. Um, you can find Dinner in a Game social media accounts here on our link tree. Um, remember we do we have social media accounts just about everywhere um because of the length of our name it varies <laughs> like on twitter we're dinner under bar game and everything like that so do use our link tree to find us if you can um and we will be back tomorrow morning for our monster hearts 2 chronicle run by star shard stories who has been hydrate bombing us all show <laughs> and then um, we will see you guys tomorrow morning and remember we have bristol lost now on mondays and that means mondays we are bristol lost tuesdays we are emerald sanctums wednesdays we are kingdoms of mist then we have thursday off then fridays we're either crossing the veil or next friday we will be uh, uh <laughs> Pure Havoc with Ivy Shadow running her D&D 5e campaign. And then Saturdays, we have the Monster Hearts 2 campaign, The Breakfast Club. So please do be sure to join us in any way, shape, can. We've got some big announcements coming up in the future, hopefully. Um, things are, are going very well for us. We're really, really happy. We're happy you could be here with us. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and find someone to raid. Let's find somebody to raid. Who's going to raid? Let's take a look. Oh, Ray's looking for the raiding part. If you guys haven't had a chance to watch their Changeling game, if they, you guys are only like what two episodes in, if I'm not mistaken. We're three or four now. Okay, but I mean, the interactions they've had just between characters and everything so far has been awesome. With the bits I've been able to watch, like uh, Star Shard has done an awesome job with, and so has the cast too, especially just the moth mommy in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake of saying that out loud in the second episode, and nearly got killed. <laughs> We got a group playing Hunter the Reckoning, a group playing Kids on Brooms. Uh, I must say, because on our recommend channel of mine, uh, Sir Pfeffer, wait, what the heck is Gloomhaven? Gloomhaven is a board game. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm Filthy looking. Lots on playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and Rosie yeah. Quartz is on. What's she doing? Cult of the Lamb. Yeah, they, uh, every time I've seen them get raided, they've been on Cult, which is, like I said, it's a good game. Especially because the whole the Twitch extension they have on there where you can actually, you know, have followers that named after you. Yep. Actually, I haven't raided Rosie in a while, so let's go ahead and raid Rosie. If anyone, yeah. no one minds. No, that's fair. I think it's been a couple months since we've raided them, so. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm so... literally just looking through the TTRPG tag and looking for people with under 30 viewers. That's yeah, what I'll, I was doing. Yep. And all yeah. I was doing is looking from, through my friends as well, so. Yeah. I was looking then, through my friends mutuals. first. Yeah. Because I, I want to. And see. as soon as you hit raid, I'm going to hydrate them. That way they can't reverse card us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump over into Rosie Quartz's channel. If you do not know Rosie, uh, Rosie is a variety streamer. They are a spicy content creator, and they really advocate for the 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 spicy content creator community. Um, they are very very sex positive. They are very 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 helpful to people in that community who are having troubles with situations like you know bank of america's closing on their accounts and wells fargo closing on their accounts and making it harder and harder for them to earn a living so please throw them some support give them a follow if you have not yet they are hilarious especially when they're playing horror rpgs no one quite screams as shrilly as rosie does when she's playing phantasmagoria because that hurts my ears sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they also are, they're hilarious and, and their community is amazing. So if you can give them a follow, <clears throat> remember at dinner and a game, we always save you a seat at the table. Please do what you can to stay safe, stay healthy. Um, 
uh, surges are now per permanent part of our life. We want you to be careful, practice social distancing, wear a mask when you can. Make sure that you are staying on top of things because no one else is going to protect you from everyone else. So do it best yourself so you can come back and join us show after show. Get your raffle tickets. Enjoy some content. We love you. We will see you tomorrow morning. And good night, everybody. Bye. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Rats, your finger gun got missed. Yeah, just hit them with the hydrate. <laughs> Double hydrate, because I had just gotten them. I've never been in one of their streams, so I don't have anything to hit them with. Oh, I mean, we play on Beggar Street. Oh, they're they're they uh, were hydrating for... Beggar Street. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. yeah. No, li well, no, well, I only just did it. It was mainly Lissa. I was innocent until the very end. Innocent. Okay, in terms of hydrate, in terms of my normal stick at this point, I was innocent. Oh, you know what we did? Uh, before everyone leaves, last week's episode, what the fuck are we naming it? Oh. I do, uh, yes, I still have, I still have to do that. Because yeah. again, we had a couple uh, ideas. There was Jill really the Devil, like, Corey had a really good one. Uh, maybe? Hold yeah, on. she rated four more of Fox. <laughs> But I hope nah, everybody's doing good. Are you right? Like, the, Thank you so much for coming right to Squishy. Ah! All right. You have so many squishies.